along with Aaron Taylor. You can feel it. These fans are ready for it. Even he was bouncing up and down a few moments ago. Let's talk UCF. Two years, one loss. They've won 25 of 26 games, and the expectations this year just as high. 25 and one the last two years puts them in great company with Alabama and Clemson. Back-to-back -back American Conference championships, back-to-back -back undefeated regular seasons. The expectations are high because it's warranted. They also are starting 17th, which is their highest preseason rank ever, so that gives them a great shot to be the New Year's sick representative once again, but they've got to get better at the D-line and the quarterback position. Yeah, they're not starting the season with Mackenzie Milton. Milton was the guy that really led them two years ago to that perfect season, and last year a knee injury knocked him out for this season as well. Now, Dariel Mack was the reliever last year, played well, but broke his ankle this summer. It's a good thing this guy decided to transfer. Brandon Wimbush from Notre Dame. What do they have with him? Josh Heupel is living right. Brandon Wimbush. What I love about him, 12-3 and three as a starter. Obviously a dual-threat quarterback. He's got some legs. He can throw the football. But his growth in the throw game, the mechanics, the grip, those are going to be crucial. If he can match that with some good decision-making, then this offense is going to operate at a high level all season long. Florida A&M has got skill. In fact, they've got the best passer that's starting this game, and that's Ryan Stanley, their quarterback, who's been there four years. What can you say about having a four-year starter? That's exactly what you want to have in this sort of environment. He's experienced. He's poised. He's got a group, uh, a tight wide experienced group of wide receivers that he's thrown to he's got a chance to go down as florida a ms all-time passing leader again for him on the road loud adverse environment decision making going to be crucial and you know what he's got a head coach that knows what to do with quarterbacks willie simmons was a terrific quarterback in the late 70s early 80s at clemson he is highly touted as a head coach he went six and five last year and in his second year, expectations are that in Tallahassee, the Rattlers are going to win some football games. Also in his second year, Josh Heupel of UCF, and he's with all John Schriffen. John? Coach, I see why they call this place the bounce house. It is rocking. Students have been here for hours. Season tickets sold out. With all these expectations, what do you expect out of this team? This I expect our guys to go play really hard tonight. Uh, eight months of work leads up to this. Our guys are excited about the opportunity to go play. Quarterback transfer, Brandon Wimbush from Notre Dame. You told us you didn't just give him the job when he walked on campus. So what did he do to earn it? And how does his offense change under him? I earned the respect of his guys. He's smart. He's competitive. He can do all the things we're asking him to. And our uh, offense expect him to have a big night tonight. What do you expect? Is he going to throw or run the ball more tonight? Uh, we're going to be a combination of everything, right? We're balanced a year ago. That's central to who we are. I uh, expect to have that again tonight. Good luck tonight, Coach. I appreciate it. All right. Thank you, John. It is warm here in Orlando. It's cooled down to 87 degrees. You can see there is some wind. We'll see how that affects the quarterbacks. Some clouds in the area, but everyone here around this program anxious to see that man, Brandon Wimbush. Now look, he started for one of the best schools in the country at Notre Dame. Last year lost his starting job. What's going through his mind right now, Aaron Taylor? He's nervous. He doesn't know what's going to happen. He's in a new environment. He's under center of a new offense, new terminology, new players. He admitted it as much. He said, hey, I'm going to be a little nervous early as we can all be, but as the game kind of wears along, I'm going to find a way to get in my groove and prove that these coaches made the right decision to name me the starter of this offense. Florida a and has won the toss. They have elected to receive. They want to keep the football away from that high-tempo UCF offense. And a line drive kick. George Webb watches it go out of bounds. Nice. And the Rattlers are going to get good field position to start this football game. I meant nice if you're Florida a and because you're starting out with pretty Free good field position. out of bounds on a kicking team. FAMU has elected to take the ball to the 35-yard line. First down. All right, welcome to Cal. Nice to see you this year. Time for the Chick-fil-A starting lineups. And we got to go quickly because both these teams are up-tempo. 
We talked about Ryan Stanley and the numbers that he's put up. How does he react to this UCF defense? I think he's going to be fine. This is a defense that the strength of it's on the back end. The defensive line is new. They're trying to find some new faces. It's crucial that they get some, some sort of rhythm early on, throwing the football. And this offensive line that's been banged up all camp long really has to show up here on the road, not only to settle the quarterback down, but to take this crowd out of it as well. Ricky Henriles is the running back, Stanley to the air, and it's in and out of the hands of Kamari Young, the tight end. Now, look, if you play football in Florida, you're going to have weapons, and the Rattlers have weapons, especially on the outside with Chad Hunter. Yeah, keep your eye on 84 tonight. He's a shifty wide receiver, typically lines up on the weak side. He's the bailout threat for Stanley. When he gets in trouble, he wants to feed him early, and particularly on third down. we got to keep an eye on that tonight. A lot of run pass options. The Rattlers want to create mismatches, low snap, Stanley fields it and fires it out, and maybe some early nerves right now for Florida A&M. UCF's defense, there are question marks up front. There are no question marks in the back when you're talking about the junior safety, Richie Grant. This is the strength of the secondary, and Grant leads that. Six interceptions a year ago with sixth in the FBS. If they can get, again, some play out of the defensive line to get some more errant passes like we've seen on first and second down, it'll be another great year for that back end. Third down 10, four-man rush, time for Stanley, and incomplete at in and out of the hands of Chad Hunter, and it was Brandon Moore, the junior corner, who made the play. Great job that time of Chad Hunter getting the release and coming back to the football. The ball is up and away. All three of Ryan Stanley's passes were off target. But if it hits you in your hands, you got to come down with it. If you're Hunter, 3-0 and is not the way you want to start out on the road against what was the country's one of the best offenses anyway a season ago. The best punter in the country last year was Chris Fadul, and Otis Anderson fumbles it, picks it up. Anderson is smothered. Flag goes down at the 30-yard line. A helmet pops out of the pile. And that's Anderson's lid. And we'll sort it out. This officiating crew out of the American Conference. During the return, illegal block in the back. Return team number 37. 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. That's Charles Lamartina, our referee tonight. Cal returns. Let's dig a little deeper into Brandon Wimbush. What type of playbook does he have tonight? I think it's going to be run, run, play action, get him settled down, give him some high percentage throws early on. What made Mackenzie Milton so extraordinary was his downfield accuracy. That's not necessarily the strength of Brandon Wimbush, although he's got a pretty live arm. It's those intermediate passes and those quick slants is what I'm interested to see if he can produce. 80 yards to go, ball at the 20. First touch for UCF. And a little end around pitch there. Otis Anderson up the sideline. Anderson out to midfield. 30 yards on the clip. He is the secret weapon for UCF. Anytime you lose contain, the defense breaks down. The Knights do a nice job of circling this defense. Early on, tackles are a problem. UCF off and running. And here's the up-tempo, and that's McCray, Greg McCray, who gets to the 46-yard line. Into the offense, and McCray's a guy that you like. Oh, man, what's there not to like? He leads what could be the most explosive running back group in the country. Averaged almost nine yards a carry a year ago. Second down, six. Wimbush in pressure. Deep shots. And just too far for Gabe Davis, who was open at the end of the pattern. There's a lot of pressure on this defense. They got a really good nickelback in Terry Jefferson. Yeah, Terry Jefferson is the consummate gold standard of what a student athlete should be. He exudes leadership. He defines what Willie Simmons wants for his entire team. Already got a couple degrees and working on a third before he leaves Tallahassee. Josh Heupel, he's got Jeff Levy as his offensive coordinator. Third down and a long six. Should have been a touchdown. It was wide open. Brandon Wimbush missed it. Probably play clock. a little nervous early on, but you got to watch that play clock. Yep, it's down, and they just get it off in time. Wimbush is going to keep it, and he's got the first down. So that's a break for UCF because they looked unorganized. Wimbush creates an eight-yard carry, 
and it moves the sticks. Early on in the season, Rich, you're always going to have administrative problems, snap counts, tackling, penalties. You're going to see a lot of that early on from both of these teams. Killens is in in the backfield. Wimbush again floats one downfield, and it's caught. Touchdown, Davis. Seven yards, and that's a shot of confidence for Brandon Wimbush. Well, they went back to the well, just a play action. One on one, Davis got inside the receiver, goes up and high points the football, uses that big body of his, six foot two, goes up, takes the ball at the highest point, and right away, UCF on the board after their first drive. That's exactly what Brandon Wimbush needed to kind of settle him down, miss an open touchdown earlier. But the jitters are out of the way. They executed perfectly. They get a touchdown, catch your breath, and get the defense back out on the field. Extra point, Dylan Barnes, new to the spot. Extra point is good, 80 yards, no problem for number 17, UCF. All the eyes were on Brandon Wimbush, wondering if he could fill the big shoes of Mackenzie Milton. Up seven, nothing. Early by Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. Yeah, both these head coaches were pretty darn good quarterbacks. Simmons at Clemson. Heupel, of course, was a Heisman runner-up at Oklahoma. Aaron Taylor go to work on the keys to the game. Well, for Florida a and they got to land punches and protect their defense. What that means is starting fast. I like that they elected to receive the ball, but they've also got to run the football to protect their defense. Defensively, they've got to tackle well versus speedy skill positions. Still some possessions limit the explosive. For UCF, play clean and physical. Game one, you get excited. They have to execute, run the football a little bit. And defensively, negative plays, takeaways, and winning on third down was the key that Randy Shannon wanted to see from his defense tonight and all season. Long. This kick down the middle and through the end zone, and now we're going to find out if Ryan Stanley has calmed down a bit. As you noted, his three throws on that first possession all missed their mark. Well, they started fast by electing to receive the football, but three and outs, not the way you want to start, especially when you find yourself in a hole. So you're right. The four years of experience is exactly for this sort of situation. You're on the road. The crowd's into it. People are feeling it. You have to settle your offense down if you're Stanley. Get inside that huddle, if they even do that anymore in today's football, and start to execute. High percentage throws, move the sticks. From the 25, second touch for the Rattlers out of Tallahassee. And a little bubble screen. The problem was there were two guys on the bubble. Chad Hunter and Xavier Smith were both in the same spot. Navelle Clark read that right away at 13 pass breakups a season ago. We talked about how good this back end is. It's going to be hard for Florida A&M if they can't even execute a bubble screen or do something to shift trade and motion themselves into some higher percentage situations because this UCF defense has won four straight downs. Eddie Tillman in the backfield with Stanley, who is now 0 for 4 in the air. Showing man coverage, single high. Opportunity to take a shot here. No snap again. This time on the mark. And caught there by George Webb. Close to the stick. He's a yard short of a first down. And it's third down and one for the Rattlers. Nice job on the stop route there. Getting this ball. You saw the low snap. But if you're Webb, plant your foot and get north and south. He ran too laterally, bringing up a third and short. He had an easily convertible second down there. Where do you go for short yardage against this UCF defense? Well, it's tough. You want to run at this young defensive line for the Knights, but your offensive line, it's been a slew of injuries. No two days in a row all throughout camp that they have the same starting five. It's going to be interesting to see whether or not they trust the big boys up front or their quarterback. And a lot of noise to deal with for the senior quarterback, Stanley. They're going to throw for it, and it's incomplete. Kamar Young, the tight end in the pattern. And right now, Willie Simmons is not a happy coach. His offense has sputtered in two drives. There was an unblocked defender off the edge or somebody in his face, but Stanley just threw a bad ball. It wasn't accurate. You got to give the receiver a chance. Stanley didn't. The Rattlers punting again. Chris Fadul had a 48-yarder, his first kick. Got a big leg, and that is a monster kick. 
that lands inside the 10, checks up, and look at Florida A&M on special teams down to the two-yard line. My goodness. That's a 63-yard punt. If you want it all, you can get it all. Grubhub, restaurants you love, delivered. 150 years of college football, and for UCF and their fans, their biggest day, January 1st, 2018, Peach Bowl against Auburn. The Knights making a case for a national championship. Mackenzie Milton was brilliant, threw for two, ran for one. Shaq Griffin had 12 tackles and a sack. Griffin was the defensive MVP, Milton the offensive MVP, and of course UCF won that ball game and took down Auburn, and what a run. All the way into last season, 25 consecutive wins, back-to-back -back American championships. They beat Memphis in both of those championship games, and look at the number of points, almost 46 points a game. Night falling here in Central Florida, just a gorgeous scene, a sellout, 45,000, Spectrum Stadium known as the Bounce House. And after that 63-yard punt, a little draw play, and it's Greg McCray, and McCray, out to the seven yard line to gain of about four. Derek Mayweather made the stop for FAMU. FAMU defensively is without their leader and returning tackler, Elijah Richardson, tonight. And that's a nice job up front. UCF concertedly coming out to run the football here. But this front seven winning these last two matchups got some early penetration there and some unblocked defenders off the outside edge and Kwame Clark coming up huge for the Rattlers bringing up third down. Now this third down has come quickly here up tempo oh. but no yardage and movement up front. It's third down and about seven here. Offside defense number 75 five yard penalty third down. That's Keenan Anderson. Those are the plays that drive coaches crazy. Instead of third and seven, you're now third and two. You have an opportunity to get yourself off the field. It's almost exponential how much easier it is to convert third down when you only have two yards to convert versus seven. They went 80 yards on five plays. Wimbush was excellent, threw for a touchdown pass. And straight ahead is McCray, and he bangs out four more yards and a first down. He's out to the 15-yard line. Marquise Bell made the stop for the Rattlers. This offensive line for UCF has a chance to be one of the better ones it's ever had. Three returning starters, all all-conference. It's a great place to start for this run game. McCray in the flats with the catch. And he's blasted at the 20, falls forward to the 21-yard line. Well, Greg McCray, you've got Adrian Killens, who has just got blazing speed. We've seen Otis Anderson already on an end around. And you, you look at the wide receivers as well with Nixon and Williams and Davis and Harris, and you wonder if there's enough footballs out there for all these skill guys. And it's incomplete. Trey Nixon was the intended receiver. Third down and three. Footing was something that they wanted to work on him with, but it looks like he gets his foot tripped that time by McCray, both with his left foot, and then comes back and gets him again for good measure. It's a long three now on third down and three, and Killens is in. Interesting. You see press coverage initially there by the Rattlers, then backing off. These are the situations where Mackenzie Milton would have fired a quick slant. And it's Killens, and he goes nowhere. And the Rattlers with a very important stop. Terry Jefferson coming up from that nickel spot for the stop. Huge stop that time by this Rattler defense. Getting this offense to go three and out, that's one of their bread and butter plays, that H counter right there. Jefferson read it right away, got some penetration, and forcing the early punt by the Knights after the previous drive led to a touchdown. That's got to give him some confidence. Andrew Osteen is a freshman kicker. Both kickers, the punter and the kicker, are new to the starting lineup and rotation for UCF. It looked like... Damn you. Takes their first charge, time out of the half. Florida A&M with a timeout. Number 17, UCF has scored first. The Rattlers get the ball when we return. I want it all. Sesame I chicken. A lot from pow chicken. Nacho. Fried chicken? Yes. Bibimbap? Yes. Niswa salad?
With the Grubhub delivery app, if you want it all, you can get it all. Grubhub, restaurants you love, delivered. UCF to punt it, Osteen runs into it and then drills it over his bench and into the medical tent and that's not where you want it. And you can see the, the linesman coming back all the way inside the 40. There is a flag down. But this is going to be about a 17 yard punt. And a huge opportunity for the Rattlers in terms of field position. After the play was over, dead ball, unnecessary roughness, personal foul, receiving team mm. number 37. 15 yard penalty from the end of the kick, first down. Here it is at the bottom of your screen right there, just a push in the back. Unacceptable. You're across the 50, giving yourself great field position. Your defense comes up with a huge stop. You need some points and some sort of momentum, if anything, just to give your defense a rest. And you go and do a silly, foolish penalties on special team, moving you farther away from the end zone. That was Chris Jerry, a sophomore for Florida A&M. Now let's see if the Rattlers can move the football. Stanley rolls, little dump, and UCF had it defended completely. Xavier Smith gets back to the line of scrimmage. Antoine Collier, the junior safety, with a stop. Little play action and rolling the quarterback out, but the ball position's a little bit behind him. Again, the inaccuracy early from Stanley is really limiting this offense. You gotta put that ball on the receiver so he can turn and get it right away when you have to turn around that quickly it gives the defense that much more ability to track and close and make the tackle Terrell Jennings in the backfield with Stanley to the 47 yard line and that was Henry Lewis on the carry nice job that time on the left side of the defensive line number 93 Landon Woodson getting some penetration that front bringing up a third and long I'm Randy Shannon I'm thinking about bringing some pressure here pinning my ears back and coming but with how inaccurate Stanley's been maybe you don't have to Shannon one of the great defensive minds in college football the defensive coordinator here in Orlando shotgun four-man rush Stanley hit as he throws and a wobbler dies incomplete at the 40-yard line and again Landon Woodson was in early that young offensive line allowed some pressure early, which negatively impacted this throw, which is unfortunate because it was there. Gets grabbed right as he's throwing the balls on it. And he's got Smith wide open on that outbreaking route. Error after error for this Rattler team starting to stack up on him. Otis Anderson is deep. Fadul who's been the MVP so far for the Rattlers. Another booming kick, and Anderson makes the catch at the five-yard line, a fair catch. Awful field position for number 17, UCF. They are up 7-0. Bush of UCF about to get the ball in his hands, and we go down to John Strippen. John? Well, guys, when Brandon Wimbush stepped on campus here in January, the first thing they noticed was his grip of the football. Now, you might think it's pretty detailed, but that's what Josh Heupel is. He's really big on quarterback mechanics. Now, here's what he did. He had his middle fingers actually above the laces, and his, and his thumb was held up high. It's even hard to hold on to the football. So what they did was they moved his middle fingers down onto the laces and moved his thumb down onto the ball. What that did, it gave him a better grip of the ball, and it actually helps him to throw the ball more consistently now. They feel like he is comfortable with his new grip, and he's caught on to it really by the end of spring ball. John, nicely done. Good hands down there. Handling the microphone and the football in expert fashion. I thought he was going to fumble it. <laughs> Adrian Killens is in play action and a high throw from Wimbush. Jeff Levy. Behind Randy Shannon there. Shannon is in the middle. Levy just behind him. There you go. Is the offensive coordinator. It was another quarterback who actually noted the grip and told the staff. And look, that doesn't always happen in, in a competitive quarterback room. But they figured, you know what? He's our guy. We got to make sure he's throwing it the right way. 
Jefferson on the nice tackle there. You're absolutely right. Of all the things that I've heard about the smooth transition of Brandon Wimbush, it was the fact that one of his teammates basically narked him out to the coaches in the offseason, said, hey, Wimbush is doing things we're not taught. That gave the coaches an early opportunity to see Wimbush's legs here. And this is what he did so well at Notre Dame is when he had the opportunity to tuck it and go, he tucked it and went with success. But because they caught it early, they were allowed to work on it. That's not something you want to start working in in the fall camp. He's been missed a touchdown earlier, seen some one hoppers. We've got to keep an eye on that to see how his accuracy has been affected. First and ten, little sidearm shot, nicely done. Beautiful. Trey Nixon with the catch. Well, Josh Heupel handed him a football when they discovered this and said, you're taking this everywhere on campus with the right grip. That's kind of an old tried true method for coaches, particularly with backs that fumble or anybody that carries the football. Right back to Nixon. And he's out to the 36-yard line. Different strategy here. UCF going to the quick game. Something Brandon Wimbush is very capable of doing. Ran a lot of bubble screens and quick throws, three-step drops at Notre Dame. Play action over the middle. Again, it's Nixon inside the 35, down to the 34. This is just a mismatch. Nixon at the bottom of the screen, kind of slow plays it, and then goes and takes off the run here. He's lined up one-on-one -on, -one on a linebacker. That's a mismatch. Credit UCF for giving themselves a chance for the play as we see another errant pass by Wimbush. And what's interesting, Rich, as successful as Brandon Wimbush has been, he's never had a game where he completed greater than 60% of his footballs and never has thrown in a game more than 300 yards. Four straight targets to Trey Nixon. And Wimbush is going to pull it and keep it and pick his way inside the 25 to the 23. That's an 11-yard carry. It's a great job by that right side of the offensive line. Jake Brown coming up to the next level, center and right guard, getting it done as well. Up tempo, and the Rattlers were not off the field. I'm not sure if the sideline was able to get a timeout. Sam you takes a second charge, so I'm out of the half. They did. To avoid the penalty, they burned their second one. This is the 30-second timeout. That's one of the challenges when you have this offense. This is a defense that banged up, so they don't have a ton of depth anyway. But Willie Simmons, nice job of being heads up and giving his team a chance. This not only avoids the penalty, but it lets them catch their breath and come up with a game plan down here in the red zone against what's already proven to be a pretty potent offense so one far. One question for Brandon Wimbush, and you can see the journey that brought him to Notre Dame, to success there, 9-3 and three as a starter, and then here as a transfer, arriving in the nick of time with two major quarterback injuries. Question was intermediate routes. How has he done on those so far tonight? Well, th that's where I think his inaccuracy is his most on display, if you will. He's missed some short ones. He missed a deep post. They came back to it, and he hit it later on. But the inaccuracy that he had at Notre Dame has followed him down to here Orlando, at least early on anyway. Now, remember, he was not here for spring ball. So it's fall ball, and that's a terrific tackle there. As flying over the top, Ronaldo Flowers with the tackle there's some athleticism on this rattler defense when guys are unblocked they're doing a nice job of coming off the edges and making plays killens again knocked off his feet another perfect example unblocked defender off the outside edge and another key third down they take the timeout they make two good stops it's now third and long behind the chains your ucf be a little conservative here, screen or maybe quarterback draw. Third down and 11. This is right around field goal range for Dylan Barnes. And on play action, Wimbush's throw, deep corner, and it's incomplete. There was contact, but no flag. Eric Smith and Trey Nixon chest to chest in the end zone. That was a good battle there. The ball was a little bit late. Nixon trying to get the push off. But Smith doesn't allow him to get away with it. And credit the officials for letting those guys play some football down there. Matthew Wright was the all-time leading scorer in UCF history, but he's gone now. He was a terrific kicker. Dylan Barnes looking for his first points from a field goal. He knocked in an extra point. This is 42 yards, and it's straight 
And it's deep enough, and it's good. Number 17, UCF opening their season. A long touchdown drive and now a 42-yard field goal. Been waiting for has arrived. Corona Premier. UCF up 10-0 in the news and notes department. Florida A&M football, along with five other sports, have been barred from the postseason by the NCAA due to self-reported violations. The Rattlers athletic program demonstrated a lack of institutional control and improperly certified as eligible 93 athletes. Now that happened before Willie Simmons was the coach and before the current athletic director. Let's go down to the field and John Triffin. John? You know, Willie Simmons is the kind of coach you want your son to play for because he's trying to set up his guys not just for athletic success, but more in life. He says academically, he's got guys taking majors like engineering, accounting, business, architecture, and he allows them to miss practice because he wants them to focus on class. He said in particular, he goes, you know, if, if I ride over a bridge one day, he goes, that's built by one of my guys, I want to know that they went to class. Yeah, he's a, a terrific leader. They're fortunate to have him. You know, it really would be interesting to see, to see how this uh, Florida A&M team does in the next couple of years. And he said it, that they were talking about Tallahassee. He grew up near Tallahassee. And he said earlier this week that Tallahassee is a lot better when uh, FAMU and Florida State are winning football games. And of course, Florida State's got an important one against Boise State. That's George Webb starting and then stopping and then getting tripped up at the 11, a flag comes down at the 15-yard line. Sean Burgess Becker with the hit for UCF. During the return, holding. Receiving team number 81. 10-yard penalty from the end of the run. Half the distance from the end of the run. First down. It's Kamari Young. On the penalty, and this is the second time in a row we've seen on special teams where they're losing yardage. When you've got 10 total yards of offense, you got to play smarter than that. And I think you, you would agree with me that we both thought Florida A&M was going to be able to move the football in this game. And as you can tell from the first three possessions, that's not been the case. Ryan Stanley, four for eight, excuse me, two for eight so far. 1,300 yards away from being the all-time leading passer, not at his best early on here. He's got the band in the student section right behind him. Deshaun Smith with the carry, and Smith with a positive play out to the 10. It's a gain of four. And a second down and six. Really nice job by the offensive line that time, and good patience to sit and let the blocks develop. And then to get in behind there in the big uglies. And you notice, this is usually an up-tempo team, Florida A&M, but they're taking their time trying to give themselves and their defense a little bit of a break. This is uncharacteristic. Clearly, Willie Simmons, the head coach, wanting to take his time so his defense can rest. Keep it on the ground and keep it with Smith. And he bounces it out to the 14-yard line. He's just shy of the first down. Now, remember, on third down and a yard, they they tried to throw for it. Keep your eye on the left guard right there. Nice job of getting the block and being patient. These backs are letting their linemen set the blocks up. Here's a third and short. Two runs so far to get him to this. You either go play action, some high percentage pass, but the way your quarterback's throwing, trust these offensive linemen that if two plays in a row have done their job up front. Two carries by Smith, and a little inside pitch is swallowed up. Randy Charlton introducing himself to Xavier Smith. Randy Charlton's just the defensive end, going to come up here. He's not blocked. It's almost like it's a zone read, but they go the, right, the wrong way. Somebody either needs to block him or you read the other defensive end, but you can't on an end-around play let the defensive end come up inside unblocked like that because this is what happens. Otis Anderson is deep. Chris Padula has had three terrific punts, one for 63 yards. He's right on the goal line, and he gets this one off, and Gosh. another gorgeous kick. Anderson back, 31-yard line, escapes one tackler into the middle, and across the 45 to the 47-yard line. 
flag down right at midfield. Brandon Wimbush, night so far. Had an opportunity here early for a touchdown. Receiver does a great job, get behind the coverage, just overthrows it to the back of the end zone. But true to point, he comes back with some composure, puts a nice touch up on it. Nixon goes up and high points the football for the touchdown there. That's that big arm that Hype was talking about. He really over, liked about 13. Foul, personal foul. Hands to the face. Kicking team number 84. 15-yard penalty. First down. Composure is an issue right now. Up there at the top of the screen. Cannot do that. You have to be smart. It's a third penalty on special teams. That was Chad Hunter of the Rattlers. Ah, a little change at the quarterback, partner. We were told we would see Dylan Gabriel. He is a freshman from Hawaii in the same high school as Mackenzie Milton. In fact, some call him Mackenzie 2.0. He is a freshman, a true freshman, and he'll get some snaps here. Good Qu place to bring him in. Nice soft landing at the uh, Florida a and 38-yard line. The handoff to Greg McCray. He gains about four. I'll tell you what, the coaches really love not only this player, but also the new red shirt rule, which allows two freshmen like Dylan Gabriel to play in up to four games without compromising their eligibility. Milani High School in Hawaii, and there's a, a ton of great Hawaiian quarterbacks who have come over and played college football. That's uh, I tell you what, McCray's got to watch his feet. That's two quarterbacks now. He's tripped trying to throw the football. He has been credited with a sack and a half so far. <laughs> and that's McCray himself. This time, no trips. Inside the 25, has the first down. Marquise Bell made the stop for the Rattlers. Defensively, Ralph Street, the coordinator on the other side for the Rattlers, is really selling out, bringing up edge pressure, trying to stop this perimeter run game. Gabriel, end zone, touchdown! Otis Anderson! Welcome to the show, kid. You see Otis Anderson right there in the slot on the numbers. That's exactly what it is you want to do if you're the quarterback. Beautiful placement of that football. Dylan Gabriel putting it on the numbers for the touchdown. That's going to give the young player a ton of confidence. Both UCF quarterbacks have touchdown throws already. Watching these guys in warm-ups. The ball really flies off this young man's hand. What is it with left-handed quarterbacks coming out of Hawaii to a Tonga Bailoa? But that is a beautifully located ball and great effort there. Really strong hands to come down with it. A little bit of a bobble there on the catch. But look at Gabriel, man. He's feeling it. I can't tell you, man, as a true freshman, to come out and to make a play like that is crucial. Do you want to talk about leadership? After the play, Wimbush goes over to the young buck and gives him a big old hug and congratulate him. That is a very, very good, tight, leadership, talent-filled quarterback room. The coach Heifel's got to feel good about what the production that he gets from that side of the ball. So 17 nothing. The house is bouncing. We knew that would happen. And we're not even into the second quarter. Daniel Obarski with the kickoff. George Webb, eight yards deep. And now Florida AM will try to figure it out offensively. There's the true freshman. Mackenzie Milton has been a tutor for him and certainly helped in recruiting him. When you think about where the quarterbacks are that have been running the, this offense, Milton, of course, from Hawaii. Wimbush comes in, transfers from Notre Dame. He's out of New Jersey. Gabriel from Hawaii. This is becoming a national brand here in Orlando. It's interesting, man. Most coaches will build their roster and fill holes through the junior college ranks. Heupel's proven an ability to be a very desirable place for transfers to come. You look across this roster, a lot of guys started someplace else and came back home to Orlando. 
On first and ten, Brian Stanley has had a miserable night so far, and it continues with a low throw there. Stanley now three of ten for just ten yards. It's early, and this might be sacrilegious to some of the fam you fans out there, especially when you have a guy that's so proficient. But Willie Simmons, at some point, may have to think about making a change at the quarterback position, not for the whole game, maybe just for a series to kind of settle him down. Hunter was wide open that time, and he won hot. Second and ten. Plenty of time. Sideline, and that's incomplete. Ball was late and high, and he had a check down to his left with the back out of the backfield. Excuse me, that was a Zinda Ray that was to the left side with nobody around him. I don't know if it's a crowd noise or the lights or something, but Stanley, uncharacteristically, not delivering the football with much accuracy here early on. What did Willie Simmons tell us? One of the things he's trying to in part on Stanley is don't try to do too much. He's scrambling here, throws across his body and incomplete. David Manigo was the intended receiver. And on a three for 12 night right now, the Rattlers off the field again. That's at D lineman Mason Chaliwa. Nice job getting into the face of the quarterback. Forcing the air and throw Stanley has to break ranks not very accurate outside the pocket That was a poorly thrown pass unfortunately to a wide open receiver That couldn't come up with it Chris Fadul Anderson watches it bounce great bounce And it's all the way inside the 20. I'll tell you what if there's an NFL scout or two and they are here to watch mostly UCF they're jotting down this guy's name in, in their notebook. Chris Fadul led the nation 47 yards at kick last year. He was born in Lebanon. He went to high school in Florida. His dad was an Olympian for the Lebanese Olympic team in 1972 as a high jumper and a javelin thrower. Wesley Chapel, Florida for Chris Fadul. How good is Chris Fadul? Florida A&M has had five three and outs has 19 total yards of offense yet has maintained better field position than UCF that was a 56 yard kick he's averaging 51 a kick pretty good Benavides Thompson uh -oh. is in the ball game and he cuts back Thompson across the 35 knocked out of bounds big hit there 46 yard line Ventavious Thompson the sophomore Southridge High School in Miami. Just a nice job of getting north and south and then using that speed. You see a missed block right there on the perimeter by the receivers, but this is a very well gifted blocking wide receiver group. Winbush up top, big throw for Harris, who was open. There he is running on the numbers, going to come free right there at the bottom right of your screen. Again, wide open by four yards. 36. 15 yard penalty automatic. First down. And another penalty by the Rattlers. This is a roughing the passer. Man, and he goes low. That's stupid and dangerous. Matt Green with the penalty, and it's costly in a lot of ways. Ball now at the 42-yard line of Florida A&M. Adrian Killens is in the backfield. Wimbush will pull, avoids one, and dives out across the 35, the 32-yard line. Kwame Clark had the best shot at him, but missed him. And here's the up-tempo. It's quick. Killens. The Rattlers have actually done a nice job as a flag goes down. The Rattlers have done a nice job of containing Killens, which is not easy. He's so explosive, man. All of these running backs for UCF are. Might be a face mask that they're looking at. 
The flag is in front of the Florida A&M bench at the 28 yard line. This is a sideline warning on FAMU. Sideline warning. Ah, they get off with a warning. <laughs> But they also got away with a face mask. It's big old number 92, Joshua Curry in there in the middle of the defensive line. He's given UCF a couple problems up front. Gotten some penetration as the officials run back in towards the football. Want to make sure they get that spot right. First down, it's first down and 10. At least the mark, marker on the field has it. Otis Anderson, he's corralled. Gain of maybe one. Doyle Grimes the stop. Great job here of just hitting it, seeing it as a linebacker. When it flashes, you go. Nice job getting the tackle behind the line of scrimmage. Wimbush for Anderson. Nice catch in space. But a nice play by the Rattlers. Terry Jefferson, the graduate senior, came up and made the stop. That ball floated a little bit out there in the flat. It was a good catch, but if that ball gets put on the money, it allows the receiver to put his foot in the ground and get north and south. Third down. That's going to be short of the first down. That was Anderson as the first quarter melts down. Your UCF, you absolutely stay on here and try and get this. And they're going to get the snap off before the quarter ends on fourth and two. Wimbush outside, and he dances for the first down. Marquise Bell coming up on the right-hand side of your screen. He sees it. But Wimbush breaks contain, gets outside, and shows you what he's known for, quarter. which is rushing the football. The debut of number 17 UCF is going quite well here in Orlando. The end of the first quarter, you're watching college football on CBS Sports Network, presented by Geico. Hey! No, he didn't. You did it for him. I used his finger. The Unicorn, coming to CBS this fall. Tomorrow night, we've got more college football right here on CBS Sports Network. Rice and Army at 6 Eastern. And then the electric Rondale Moore and the rest of the Purdue Boilermakers will be playing at altitude in Reno against Nevada. That at 930. And this is a guy you want to see. Rondale Moore. Oh, my gosh. This guy won the Paul Horning Award a year ago as the most versatile player in the country. He's electric, and he's what you want, even as a true freshman. One of the hardest workers on the field. Small does not mean uh, that you're short or don't have the ability to, to run with some power. He's incredible. Jay Norvell, team won eight wins a season ago. Got that new air raid offense with Matt Mummy, Hal Sun, who's widely credited for the air raid system that we know. He's a heck of a player. UCF in the Verizon red zone. National average is 63%. Look at what they did last year. 53 of 59. And on the carry there is Greg McCray. If you're just joining us, number 17 UCF is without Mackenzie Milton. Of course, the awful leg injury that he suffered at the end of last season. He does have the nerve back in his foot, and he expects to play next year, which is great news. This is McCray straight ahead. Of course, Dariel Mack, who relieved him last year, hurt his ankle. And he won't be available till the middle of the season. So Brandon Wimbush, the transfer from Notre Dame. Face mask, defense number five. Half the distance to the goal, automatic, first down. And for one electric series, Dylan Gabriel, the freshman from Hawaii, have been the quarterbacks tonight. Rocks right there, Marquise Bell. None of these penalties are borderline. No, they're, they're, they're egregious and they're foolish, and these are the things that drive coaches crazy. Wimbush now at first and goal from the seven. Sets, throws, high ball, and in and out of the hands of Gabe Davis, who went up to high point a ball for a touchdown in the first quarter. This is the exact look you want. You got to put it on his back shoulder, but the ball floats, 
and is off target if he puts it where it needs to be that's another touchdown second and goal McCray short of the end zone lands at the two bounces for a yard Yep, and you'll see UCF get right back up to the line of scrimmage. It's third down, but make no mistake about it. This is four down territory for them. If they don't get it up here, they'll dial up another one. From the two. Wimbush is hit and dropped things. at the 10. Marquise Bell, the sophomore out of Bridgeton, New Jersey. Unblocked defender off the outside edge has been the problem. They're doubly committing. We've seen him make tackle after tackle. Nice job by Green there coming off the edge and very smartly with the lost yardage. UCF electing to kick the football and giving Barnes another shot to use that left leg of his. Barnes hits from 43 earlier. This more of a chip shot with a little tricky angle. And he knocks it home. He looks like he's been the kicker for the last four years. He's smooth. They were nervous, man. They didn't know what to expect out of Barnes, but they lost a good one. Number 17, UCF in control right now, up 20 to nothing. Here's on top as we go back to Rich Aaron and John. All right, Adam, thank you. Now, national champions, of course, Clemson, two national championships since 2015, but here in Orlando, 2017 is in lights and on the press box and proudly displayed by the UCF Knights. Only undefeated champion of 2017. Now you talked about their highest rating to start a season. Our Ram AP poll powered by Ram trucks. We'll get to it in a moment. As UCF is ready to go and boots it into the end zone. George Webb decides to take a knee because he knows the Ram truck AP poll is due. Here's the top 10. UCF is 17. UCF is 17. Alabama, the story there is all the injuries they've had on the defensive side of the football. Lost another one here recently. Georgia going to open with a conference game against Vanderbilt in the SEC East. Michigan's a team that I'm interested to see. I think there's going to be some carnage both on the Big Ten on both sides of the conference. I think the Big 12 is going to have some carnage. A lot of expectations for LSU this season. Obviously, they beat the UCF team a season ago in the Fiesta Bowl. What we know about college football is this, Rich. Where we start is not where we finish. And a big opportunity for the American in Houston as they have Oklahoma this weekend. The Rattlers look rattled offensively. They haven't had much go right so far. Ricky Henriles tackled there by Kenny Sunye. Sunye is just right here. He's going to dip inside, cross the face. you got to get hat to hat, shoulder to shoulder. That's the penetration and the tackles for loss that Randy Shannon said, hey, I want 15 to 18 negative plays for my guys per game. That one goes in the win column. That just took them also the Rattlers from 19 total yards down to 15. Stanley unloads and it's incomplete. Second year for Randy Shannon here. Of course, head coach at Miami, long time foundational guy at the University of Miami as a defensive coordinator and a head coach. Grew up in Miami. So he knows this state, he knows defense. Was a defensive coordinator at Florida for three years, TCU and Arkansas after that run at Miami. He even spent some time with the Dolphins three seasons. Been a hell of a coach for a long time, knows this state as well as anybody. Third down 14. Stanley's in trouble. Hit as he throws, and that's incomplete. Randy Charlton with the pressure and the hit. That time they're able to get there with just rushing four, just some games on the outside, this offensive line that's been mightily banged up gets to the quarterback when you can get pressure like that on the quarterback only rushing four players it's going to be a long long night but the best offensive production that they've had all night long has been for duel their punter this has been about the only bright spot we can say for this offense is watching this kid kick the football and this is his Worst effort of the night. It's still pretty good. Anderson 
Takes it on a hop at the 40. And another penalty. Flag down behind the play. Sits at the 36-yard line. I don't know if we keep stats on this. We could probably get it, but I think for the last five plays on special During teams. Return, illegal block in the back, receiving team number eight. Ten-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down, timeout. That flag on UCF. And number 17 looking good at home. At first, you're worried about just uh, saving his life, right? And, and then uh, ultimately, you, you want to see him back on the football field competing at the same level, uh, if not a better level than he was before. Uh, he's got a great determination and spirit, uh, and that still uh, transcends throughout our entire program uh, every single day. He's been in the quarterback meeting room, been out on the practice field. Uh, now he's getting a chance to join his uh, teammates in the weight room. Uh, it's great for him and great for us. And the news for Mackenzie Milton, good this week. Full feeling in that right foot. Brandon Wimbush getting the start here. Young Dylan Gabriel from Milton's High School in Milani, Hawaii. Milani High School has played. Look at the first down disparity. 15 to zap for UCF. Adrian Killens in the backfield. Wimbush has had his moments here. Man open, but it's underthrown and almost intercepted. On the coverage, Marquise Bell. Davis was open. That ball has to get thrown quite a bit sooner. Look how well the defensive backs are allowed to react. If that ball's thrown immediately, it's probably another touchdown. Another mistake by Wimbush there under center. Wimbush again to the air, to the sideline. Nice catch. Jacob Harris, the senior. Great job this time coming back to the football. Has to wait on it a little bit, but goes up and high points it with his hands as he should. Wimbush again, up tempo, looking, wandering, now throwing. And that went a little too high for Trey Nixon. Only a two mountain route that time. Interesting play selection here by UCF. Looks like they're trying to get Wimbush some opportunities, but again, Sub 50 percent and you compare what he's done to Gabriel. Gabriel had the one series. You combine them into one quarterback. It's been a pretty good night. Second down 10. Killens finally gets outside and turns it on. And Killens rolling inside the 25 and out of bounds at the 21 yard line. Adrian Killens Jr. You don't get good blocks and runs like this unless your receivers are blocking. Look at the top of the screen right there on the numbers. Both of those receivers really working for their guys to allow Killens to get to the edge and move the sticks in a big way. 33 yards, a little double stack formation and a screen quick to Nixon. And he's got about seven yards before he's out of bounds. We'll see where they mark it. Actually, they'll mark it back at the 19, so a gain of almost five. Killen showed you that explosive home run speed that seemingly every running back on this team seems to have. Killen straight ahead. And a gain of five short of the first down. Cameron Burton made the stop. Ritz, when I was watching Killen's getting ready for this game, he makes all his plays just like we saw there in the perimeter, but also just like we saw in this last play in between the tackles. That should be enough for the first down. And it is to the 12. Remember, Brandon Wimbush is running an offense that he's not run before. I mean, he did not get a spring practice. He was here in the fall and over the summer. Over the middle, caught, touchdown, Davis again. Beautiful location by Brandon Wimbush. Sets his feet, puts that ball on the money. Extremely small window that time for him to find the breadbasket of Davis, and he threaded it in. We've given him a lot of fair criticism for his accuracy, but here we're seeing some razzle-dazzle here as they go showing that they're going to do some trick plays, but then just want to put that on tape for I, their upcoming that's, opponents. That's where I was going. That's going straight to the scout tape. <laughs> To be ready. They may not even have a playoff of that. 
extra point is good. Well, this drive started with the dropped interception. Brandon Wimbush got lucky. The Rattlers dropped what could have been a spark play. But true to form, the experienced quarterback puts the ball on the money, hits Davis, and you are watching college football on CBS Sports presented by Geico. Going for a 90-yard jog. Tied for the longest touchdown run in Clemson history. Makes it 14-0 on Georgia Tech. Red teams flexing early tonight, Rich and Aaron. Thank you, Adam. 27-0. Comes in off to a fast start. UCF off to a, a fast start. Now, that's that's actually terrific camera work because that's what you have to <laughs> contend with. This is the bounce house. And when they get up and they get rolling, this whole place shakes. And it is sold out tonight. 45,000 are here. And number 17, UCF. Picking up where they left off last year. George Webb for the Rattlers has a seam. George Webb to the 40, flag down, and so is Webb at the 45-yard line. Excellent return there, giving the Rattlers a chance. This one may be coming back. Yeah, going to be a legal block in the back, looks like. During the return, illegal block in the back, receiving team number 31. Ten-yard penalty from the spot of the foul, first down. And Willie Simmons obviously not happy. Keep your eye on the right side of the screen right there. Number 18 on the American logo there. I, I think for some, the score of this game is not a surprise, but I think for Willie Simmons, he's surprised and disappointed that his offense not only doesn't have points, but they're not even moving the football right now. And I'm surprised and not surprised by this next move. I think we're going to see another quarterback here. Well, that's a possibility, but it looks like right now Ryan Stanley has come out for this series. The senior out of Pembroke Pines. Rashawn McKay is the backup, and it's not just the throwing game but on the ground Deshaun Smith loses four yards Landon Woodson buries him and that's a good way to describe what the defense is doing to Florida A&M 13 total yards and already 57 penalty yards I know that Ryan Stanley's had a tremendous career probably going to go down as the most prolific passer and all-time passing leader in Rattlers history if you're Willie Simmons, you got to think about making a change at the quarterback position. Stanley's throw. Nice catch for a first down. The first first down. David Manigo makes the catch for the Rattlers. Nice job one-on-one. -on -one. Opens the DB's hips up. Gets him turned. Nice job adjusting back to the football. Great body control there to move the sticks. I'm almost wondering if Florida A&M needs to use some tempo. They've been slowing things down. Stan Lee over the middle into traffic and incomplete. Eric Mitchell from his linebacker spot got a hand on him. Just mechanical. We talked about him pressing and making bad decisions. Has no idea the underneath receiver is right there. Eric Mitchell almost comes down with an interception, taps his chest and says, hey man, my bad. And that almost was Ryan Stanley's bad. Four of 16, 25 yards. Deshaun Smith, and that was doomed from the start. A low snap, a low handoff, a fumble, a flag. Did I catch it all? They'll sort it out in the backfield. Uh, Florida A&M.
Florida A&M in Tallahassee, their enrollment close to 10,000. Great history there academically and football-wise. Established in the 1800s. Personal foul, chop block, offense number 76 and 59. Half the distance to the goal, first down. Going to see right there on the left-hand side a high-low. Once a defender is engaged with one of the offensive linemen, he cannot be cut. But this offensive line has been shuffling pieces. We've seen many errant snaps. Throwing the quarterback's timing off, taking his eyes off the football. This is a group. The penalty for a chop block is declined. It is second down. Huh. This is a group that has struggled mightily up front Correction. and bank. Third down. It is third down. Now Josh Heupel said, if I'm going to decline the penalty, I, I want that down. So it is third down and 12 instead of second down and 22. Well, they're 0 for 6 so far, so it's understandable why Heupel would want to do that. Third and longs, mine will be third and 50 for the way the Rattlers have been executing. they got to throw this up and hope their receivers go up and make a play. Stanley's flushed, and he fires it into the turf, incomplete. Deshaun Smith was there, but it, it didn't look like Stanley was trying to get it to him. I think he just wanted to unload and not get buried. Yeah, and that time was 97, Mason Chaliwa, the defensive lineman. One of 10 to 12 that Randy Shannon said that he was hoping would step up and he would expect to play. He's had some pressure tonight, but once again, it's Fadul and his leg. is going to be the only thing the Rattlers can use to move the football down the field. Right now, that's going to dominate the Florida A&M highlight show this weekend. And again, he booms one to the 27-yard line. Backing Anderson up, who escapes, shifts to gear. 45, Anderson 40, has a block to the 30 and down to the 23-yard line. What a weapon, Otis Anderson. I almost wondered if Fadul outkicked his coverage a little bit there. Nobody was down there and able to corral Anderson, and then it's just that speed. I mean, him and McCray and Killens. It's an embarrassment of riches of what they have on the perimeter for guys that can make plays. First six possessions for the number 17 team in the country. 80 yards on their first touch. Field goal on their third. And then Dylan Gabriel came in for a series, threw a touchdown pass, was two for two, and here he is, the freshman out of Milani High School in Hawaii for his second series. And both times they've given him great field position. Play action, fires it, end zone, caught, but incomplete, out of bounds, was Gabriel Davis. Not a bad throw, though, from oh. Dylan Gabriel. A little bit late, but watching this kid in warm-ups, Nice job to go up and high point that football. Bobbled a little bit, but Davis eventually comes down with it out of bounds. Second down and 10. But Gabriel was spinning it in warm-ups, particularly on those quick slant routes that we're so used to seeing McKenzie Milton throw in the RPO game. McCray busts loose. End zone touchdown. 25 yards for Greg McCray. Keep your eye right here. Parker Boudreau, Notre Dame transfer. Defensive lineman goes inside of him, keeps his shoulders square. That's a lot harder to do than it may look. McCray sets him up, takes advantage of it, and hits his head on the goalpost. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's all working right now for UCF. Barnes with the extra point. Well, Rich, this drive started with a big... Return in the punt game. Otis Anderson taking advantage of his speed to get them down the field. Then it leads to Greg McCray's legs 
and his ability to get north and south, this night offense humming once again. Ways to win this season with single game contest on FanDuel. Make your first deposit and get a $20 bonus. Coming up at halftime, the Verizon Halftime Report. Adam Zucker, Brian Jones, Houston Nutt from our CBS Sports Network Studios in New York. A look around college football. Big game in the American. Cincinnati at home leads UCLA 10-7 at the half. They'll touch in on that. First half stats and highlights from this one. And maybe a preview of some big games in Florida this week. Another big game for the American. USF against number 19, Wisconsin. That's tomorrow night. And the Boise State-Florida State game has been moved from Jacksonville to Tallahassee because of the hurricane. And this note as well, the Presbyterian-Stetson game has been postponed because of the hurricane. I'm sure for you Stetson season ticket holders out there, they will try to reschedule that game as best they can. It's interesting being around this community down here in Florida this week, having some conversations with some of the local shop owners and employees. They take hurricanes seriously as yes. they should, so our thoughts go out to the health and well-being of anybody that's been affected or in the path. Well, 13 years down in South Florida, I can tell you that it, you don't mess around with those things at all. George Webb goes to a knee, and now the Rattlers, this first half must seem like an eternity for them because most of their offense has been throwing and most of their throws have been incomplete, and that stops the clock and slows that tempo. Because of the sacks, they now officially have zero rush yards. Just 25 yards of total offense. Ryan Stanley's been extremely off target. The offensive line has given up some pressures. UCF has done a nice job of being able to affect the quarterback and his release point and the timing, and just doesn't seem like anything is working offensively for him. Still wondering whether or not at some point we'll see another quarterback because it certainly can't hurt. Will end around. Face mask there. Looked like it, but no flag. As Azende Ray is brought down, Kalia Davis. Let's see where he got him. No, good no call. Right there on the shoulder cap. This officiating crew has been pretty spot on. There you see Willie Simmons talking to the backup quarterback, Rashawn McKay. He's a hometown kid. They're both hometown guys. Simmons grew up 20 minutes from Tallahassee. And McKay, the redshirt freshman, is from Tallahassee. McKay sending in the signal, sitting right next to the head coach. You better be certain that those two are talking strategy and I'd be surprised if we didn't see McKay before the night's over. Stanley, that's a well-designed play, but it looked like his receiver, Azende Ray, stopped his route. And you could see him actually say, you got to go up the field. Well, they got to do a lot of things. Stanley was a 60% passer a season ago. Billy Simmons calls the plays for this offense. Quite an accomplished quarterback in his own right. Playing at Clemson in the 70s. He's a black quarterback having a tremendous amount of success and the first player ever at that school to graduate in just three seasons. Third down, flushed to the sidelines, caught there, but then blasted out of bounds. And it's Kamari Young, the tight end, just a freshman. Positive play, but not enough to move the chains. And it's fourth down. And about five. And here is Fadul, who may need fluids intravenously here at halftime with all the action and the punts that he's had. And he's been glorious with a big, big leg. This is his ninth punt already. Got to put a little bit more air underneath this one. Last time it was long distance, but he outkicked his coverage, and Anderson was able to exploit it. Much better. Anderson, a fair catch at the 24 yard line. A lot of uh, coaches around the country, especially in the American, probably want to see some highlights of Brandon Winbush. Well, early on, you understand the jitters, missed a wide open touchdown, but they come right back to it. And he almost drops an interception later on in the game, but then finally goes up and finds Davis for the touchdown and then comes back again for his second one on an extremely well-thrown ball. So a little bit of a mixed bag for Brandon Wimbush, 9-17, really close to that 
that you want to be as a quarterback 60 plus obviously but the two touchdowns managing the game in a new offense first night all in all not the best of nights but been a pretty good half so far things he can build off of Otis Anderson tripped up and that was Terry Jefferson who made the stop UCF coaches told us they want to get Otis Anderson the ball so badly that they have a Otis Anderson touch chart that they keep just to every three or four drives look at the chart and say hey when did we, we need to get it to him a little more it's an embarrassment of riches of speed on this offense Wimbush there's a slant and a catch that's Marlon Williams his first catch of the game and Williams to the 38 yard line that was an extremely great job by Williams going up and catching that football with his hands knowing he was going to take a shot. Wimbush in the pocket. Ball squirts loose. And it looks like UCF has it back. Jake Brown, the first team, all AAC selection on it. Going to be some pressure off that backside. The ball just slips out of his hands. I don't know if it's a humidity or what. The rush was beaming down on him, but he just... Looks like he just lost control of it. Timeout for injured player. There is an injured player for Florida AM down. Looks like Demontre Moore. It's their best D lineman can play anywhere along the defensive line. He's a big load of laundry and been disruptive at times tonight. Rattler's going to hope he can pop up. When's the last time you were in the bounce house? Uh, probably three or four years ago, and I got to say man This was one of the better game day experiences across the board not just at game day when the game's going But leading up to it the drive in they take their football seriously and for good reason They've got a, a terrific home game coming up against Stanford Top of the screen. Kind of hard to see, but they're looking at the right ankle area, lower leg anyway, with Demontre Moore, Tampa native. It's good to see him sitting up. Always a good sign. It gets rough down in there in the trenches, Rich. It's not baseball or singles right. tennis like you played today. You all know right. what I'm saying? All right, all right. <laughs> I can take it. Go ahead. A lot of our listeners at home might not know that you were quite the accomplished baseball player Come in on. college. Come on, easy. I'm, no, I, I have a lot of respect for baseball. Easy. Although it is interesting that two guys that grew up near each other and went to high schools that were somewhat rivals at the in the day get to work together 3,000 miles away I love it Aaron Taylor the pride of De La Salle High School in Concord California Adrian Killens bouncing out and Killens is out at the 34 yard line these weapons that they have in this running back room th this is going to be one of the key staples this season. Winbush airs it out. And it's just overthrown. Trey Nixon has been one of his favorite targets tonight. UCF is literally running one wide receiver routes up at the top of your screen. This is straight go route. He comes inside. Little skinny post. Just straight speed one-on-one. -on -one. And once again, an overthrown deep ball. That was one of the things... And Mackenzie Milton was so exceptional at not just good on the deep balls, but over 60% accurate on the deep balls. Azende Ray is back for an Andrew Osteen punt. And Ray makes the fair catch at the 21 yard line. Well, Rich, I've been pretty impressed all night long with this defensive line at UCF that's made life miserable for Ryan Stanley. They haven't had the blitz.
This is a group that Randy Shannon wanted to challenge. He brought in 22 guys. He said, hey, I just need 10 to play. And they've been playing up front. Guys like Mason Chaliwa been showing up. Brendan Hayes, he was second team all AAC a year ago. Had three sacks, 11 tackles for loss. There's a lot of young players. They're rotating some guys, but that's probably the position on the defense that needs to develop the most. They've been looking pretty good so far against a rather offense that's struggling to do anything right. Well, it's a 22-yard line. Stanley, quick throw. That was behind his receiver who pays the price. Xavier Smith, Antoine Collier on the coverage. This has really been the story of the game all night long for Ryan Stanley. 30 total yards, almost double the penalty yards, and they have offense. Five completions, nine punts. And when you take a look at the field position and what they've been able to do, an unbelievable seven, three, and outs. And they've only run the ball seven times tonight. Their first down production has been abysmal. Just one of them. Stanley rolling, squares up, dumps it off. Nice play there. Acrobatic catch by Smith on the sidelines. Let's see if he was inbounds. And nope. no. And I, I thought he should have put it on the receiver a step sooner. He waited to the second window. He wanted to push the ball down the field. Take three, four, five cheap, easy yards. And another third and long. If you're UCF, guess what? Your defensive line that's on the field, pin your ears back. These guys right here, tee them loose, and let them get after 14. 5 of 21 is Stanley. Third and 10. Little screen, almost picked off. That's incomplete. Terrell Jennings, the intended receiver. There's Fadul making sure he's got 10 other guys on the punt team. <laughs> been the bright spot. It's not very good when the bright spot of your offense is your punter, even as good as an accomplished as Fadul is. Credit UCF for some of the young guys stepping up, but it's a rattler offense that is having a tough night. Otis Anderson is deep, and he needs to be because Fadul hit another really good one. Anderson backs up to his 23. And Anderson loose again, this time corralled at the 40. When your football program loses one game in two years, you get sellout crowds, you get alums that want to contribute, and you get a brand new weight room, state of the art. Just gorgeous stuff in there. Look at that. Aaron Taylor's about to put me through a wall with a medicine ball. And then John Schriffen. Lock it, lock it, lock it, lock it. <laughs> he locked out 185 10 times. And that was one of the better bicep workouts I've gotten in quite some time towards the end there. There, there was John. I was hoping he'd help me out a little bit more there. Aaron Taylor going rogue there inside the state-of-the-art weight room. His workout uh, DVD is available now <laughs> after the show. Marlon Williams. Marlon Williams with the carry. Flags down, two of them. That's a 13-yard gain that may get to 15 more for a possible face mask with Dylan Gabriel back in for this drive. Personal foul, face mask. Defense number 27. 15-yard penalty from the end of the run. First down. Another penalty. See a stiff arm, which an offensive player is allowed to do, but that left that's, hand there, that's just, you just it's egregious, and it's dangerous. And again, a lot of these penalties aren't tweeners or borderline. They are obvious. Bentavious Thompson's in. It's the fourth running back to see it. And Thompson, who already has one nice run, rips off another out of the 23-yard line. And that's a first down, a 10-yard carry. Great job by the left side of that offensive line of getting great push. Gabriel, end zone, may have been interference, flag down. Eric Smith 
Gabriel Davis, who has two touchdown catches, the intended receiver. You see Willie Simmons is not pleased. Pass interference, defense number eight. 15-yard penalty, automatic, first down. See, Willie Simmons is saying that that ball was uncatchable. Disagreed with the call. But, man, there was some mustard on that football by Gabriel that time. What I'm watching from UCF is a lot of these routes seem predetermined where literally only one guy's going deep and they're taking shots. Gabriel looking, throwing. Got him. Touchdown, Nixon. Very Reggie McKenzie-esque. Good job of putting his foot in the ground, turning his shoulder, showing the breadbasket to Gabriel. Puts it right on the money. We've seen both of these quarterbacks, the true freshman Gabriel and Brandon Winbush, down here in the red zone, throw that nice, tight, quick slant game for scores. Number 17, UCF is looking all of that tonight with a 41-0 lead. Take a look right here down at the bottom. Gabriel Davis, literally only a one-man route. That was a penalty, of course, for pass interference. It comes back, but it almost seems predetermined. Look at that. Gabriel's not going through any progression. He's simply waiting there for Trey Nixon to get himself open, and he's finding him, but at some point, what we saw Mackenzie Milton do such a good job of is be a full field reader. This is a fast offense. They certainly have their preferred receivers that they like to throw the football to. But this is over the top a little bit where it's pretty clear who the primary receiver is. The quarterbacks are locking on to him, and the Rattlers can't do anything to defend him. Well, this has gone about as well as Josh Heupel could have hoped not only Wimbush effective and throwing for touchdowns, but getting Dylan Gabriel for a soft landing for a couple of series. And now he looks sharp. <laughs> I'm happy. I'll say this, man. They've got quarterbacks on this roster that they can win with. And remember, they'll get Daryl Mack back about halfway through the year. They're going to be okay at that position this season. Azende Ray out to the 22-yard line. Florida A&M can't throw it tonight, and they have refused to really run it. Dylan Gabriel, true freshman. Mackenzie Milton 2.0, some say. Milton instrumental in his recruitment. They went to the same high school, Milani High School. Broke all of Tua and McKenzie's records in Hawaii. Gets got a heck of an arm. Saw him in warm ups, the ball jumping off his hands, and can you imagine coming to the game doing the same? Can you imagine the record book in Hawaii oh for quarterbacks? Not just the guys that, that you just mentioned. I mean, look, you just mentioned Tua. You mentioned Mackenzie Milton and Gabriel. What about Marcus Mariota? What about, let's go way back to Jason Gesser, yes, who wow. took Washington State to a Rose Bowl. How about Timmy Chang, who lit it up on the island? Timmy, Timmy, Timmy. They've had some prolific passers come off of the island, and a lot of them working with a quarterback coach there, passes. He's had a great influence on a lot of these guys. Led their football on the islands. That's for dang sure. And look, the, this guy, Gabriel, six feet, 186, and the lefty is, Josh Heifel told us, can really spin it. UCF takes the first charge time out of the half. This is a 30 second timeout. Miliani High School. That's, uh, that is some great high school football. And Hawaii is good. You saw Hawaii last week. University of. Yeah, Nick Rolovich has it rolling. It's not often that you can overcome six turnovers. But that run and shoot 2.0 found a way to do it. It's a great defensive effort at the end of that game with Manny Williams. 
to bring down Khalil Tate, who unfortunately came up a half a yard short. And those are the sorts of types of wins Mountain West Conference needs against the Pac-12. They've won five straight against the Pac-12, which is why Cincinnati, who's up on UCLA, that can be huge for the winner of the UCF Cincinnati game on October 4th. If you want that credibility nationally, you have to beat Power 5 programs. To UCF credit, they've done that. They play Stanford in a couple weeks here. They boat raced Pitt a season ago. Pitt will be looking for some revenge, but those are the things that you have to do that we've seen TCU, Boise, and Utah successfully do as they've made the move from the group of five up the charts. Brandon Hayes flattens Stanley. UCF takes their second charge time out of the half. This is the 32nd timeout. As an offensive lineman, you simply can't catch your hands or your weapon. Nice job by Hayes dipping his shoulders. And this is another timeout that we've seen. I, when you're up 41-0, I get it. In a normal game with strategy, this is exactly what you want to do. And at this point, UCF is just trying to get some reps for their players. And maybe also getting an opportunity to see how these quarterbacks operate in a two-minute situation. Those are valuable reps that are hard to replicate during practice. So where some might think that this is lack of sportsmanship, this is a really good teaching opportunity for Heupel and his young quarterbacks. Two and a half minutes left in a first half dominated by UCF. Fadul. Another great punt. Anderson fumbles it. Gets it back. And the ball sits at the 29. So in this teaching moment here with 226 left, we'll see what UCF can do with it. And this is what coaches worry about. Anderson just bobbles the football there. Luckily, it bounces right and he falls on it. But the lack of concentration, obviously the game is in control right now for UCF. And borrowing, you know, barring the, the most incredible comeback in the history of this sport that we've ever seen, the outcome is largely determined. So having an opportunity to have Brandon Wimbush come out and operate the two-minute offense as they get in the conference play in the American, they're going to need these sort of situations. So... They're watching him very closely how well he operates here. Wimbush, it's Killens. He's electric, and he's inside. Rattler territory to the 45, stops the clock, they move the chains. This is just a lead play, bringing the tight end is going to go up through the next level. There was an unblocked defender, Doyle Grimes, right there in the hole, but Killens' speed beats it. Another draw. Killens again. 41-yard line. UCF has one timeout, 155 on the plus 40. Plenty of time here. Pick your hole. Especially if you can do that. Killens to the 28. You see the defenders from F and A. Fam, you getting up slowly, and there's a defender on the ground now. That's Matt Green. Grabbing the back of his right knee there. He heard a couple boo birds. UCF has had a lot of guys go down with injuries. Not at all indicating that that's been the case here. It is hot and humid. It is. In Orlando, the air is thick. And this defense has been on the field an awful lot. See him there hydrating there. John Schriffen, how are you down there? I know it's hot. It's a little sticky down here, but I will <laughs> say, from my perspective on the sideline, I've been watching Wimbush and Gabriel pretty closely as they both come off the field. And I've been impressed with just their relationship with one another. You know, when Wimbush comes off and the coaching staff is talking to him, Gabriel is right in the huddle. He's making sure to soak up all the advice that they've been giving to, to Wimbush and vice versa. They've been helping each other out. And another thing that's interesting is that Coach, Coach Heifel told us that Mackenzie Milton has been doing the same thing for both of those guys as well. In practice, when Milton hasn't been able, when he's not actually at rehab and he can go to practice, he is coaching up the next quarterback who goes into practice and making sure that everyone is on the same page. So I think Coach Heupel has really established a unity amongst all of the quarterbacks in that room, and that's what's been so impressive to watch. That's amazing, John, because uh, when Darrell Mack gets back in the middle of the season, you'll have three guys who 
are guys you could turn to from Winbush who started here to Gabriel who's looked great to Mac who led the win after that awful injury to Milton against USF last year and then quarterbacked in the bowl game. Ball's loose. Terry Jefferson pries it loose. This is not rugby. Ball's dead. No scrum. I thought Terry Jefferson had possession of that football and then it squirted out late. Boy, they could use a break oh, like man, this, couldn't they? Man. Just, yeah. No, they're going to give it back to UCF. Brandon Wimbush, once again, bobbles the snap, just doesn't handle it. Wonder if he took his eyes down. Richardson was coming off the outside edge. They've been bringing a lot of edge pressure. Knights got lucky there. All right, second out at 14. Remember, this was supposed to be a teaching moment. Winbush's throw. Nice. Gabe Davis inside the 15 to the 12-yard line. You're inside the red zone on the 15-yard line, 52 seconds. You have a timeout if you need to stop and kick the field goal. Run game still wide open here. Wimbush, lots of time. Shovel pass. Anderson, five. Anderson to the pylon, and he's out of bounds at the two. Or did he fumble the ball? If he did and it went through the end zone, that's a touchback. That's a touchback. And I think it is a touchback. Let's see when the ball comes loose. Remember, we saw Anderson early muff a punt. Try and... Oh, I don't... That's tough right there. They may need to take a look at that. You see him reaching. His foot goes down right when the ball comes out of his hand. That right foot lands out of bounds. Just as the ball hits the pylon and pops loose right there there. It almost looks like his heel could have hit at the two-yard line They need to take a look at that as well the Crowd has seen the replay on the giant screen here at Spectrum Stadium the Previous play the fumble and the result of the touchback is under further review And this is our first replay of the year here How about that? Now obviously, if you fumble in the field of play and it goes out of bounds through the end zone, it's a touchback. And possession would go to Florida AM. But this is where I thought I saw his heel hit at that two yard line before he ever even gets to the pylon. Right there, he's out. Which would mean dead ball at the two or three yard line. It was interesting. Immediately after the play, you saw the official. Wave the clock stopped and he ran right to that spot. Oh, but does his heel actually come down and touch the line from that angle? It's hard to tell. This is uh, this is really CSI bounce house here <laughs> trying to reconstruct this. I think it hits, but you have to be it has to be a hundred percent to overturn. You have to be conclusive and without a doubt to overturn it. You can't be, yeah, it kind of looks that way. It's a tremendous effort by Anderson, but as soon as he hits the pylon, this should be out of bounds. Can the pylon cause a fumble? No. It, it's an extension of, of the plane. But by definition, the pylon's out of bounds. So if he's down, depending on where he's down and the ball's out, this is interesting. That's the first thing they're looking at. Was that left heel down there at basically the two yard line? But the top of the pylon is not out After of bounds. After further review, the ruling of the field has changed. The runner stepped out of bounds just inside the two-yard line with the ball still in his possession and prior to losing it. It is UCF's ball first and goal just inside the two-yard line. The clock will start on the snap. Ooh, and that's a big break. And these are the sort of things, this is the look that they like. You take a look right there by Anderson. And these are the situations that coaches want. A little bit of pressure. Two-minute situation. Yes, you want your guys to make a play, but you better believe Coach Heupel and that staff is going to show everybody about how careful you have to be down near the goal line. 
Wimbush blown up again, escapes, in trouble, escapes again, and it still escapes, and he got close to that pylon, to the two-yard line. And a flag comes roaring down after the play. And that shows you what a tough runner he is. 6'2", 225. Powerful. Personal foul. Late hit out of bounds. Defense number 36. After distance to the goal. Automatic. First down. Just a big, powerful runner. So hard to bring down. And right there, a drop. That's, Jump on the pile. And that's Matt Green. Eight penalties for 87 yards so far by the Rattlers. Lean on this offensive line, punches ball. In. Not quite there. Doyle Grimes up with the hit. You got to watch the clock here. You got 11 seconds. They do have a timeout. And they UCF use it. Calls the third and final charge time out of the half. This is the 32nd timeout. Second down, you got easily one try at the end zone, if not two. You want to put it where your guy can catch it or throw it out of bounds because you got to give yourself three seconds to kick that field goal at the end. This is the situation. How cute does Heifel want to get with his quarterback? You'd love to finish a drive like this with the half that they've had. Almost 500 yards of offense, 461. To finish this two-minute situation, it's been real herky-jerky, but those are the things you expect in week one. They had the long review. Anderson was proven correct. Luckily, he stepped out trying to make a play. They didn't have to go whether or not the pylon was involved or not. Okay, so second and goal, out of timeouts. What's your play call here? You run boot action. You give him a two-way go. You use Malik Zay or excuse me, wow, a little Freudian slip there. Brandon Wimbush's legs where you can throw it or run it. Can't get stopped here with no timeouts, though. I think either guy would be a good choice, and that throws behind him. Now, that doesn't kill the drive. It eats up only three seconds. It's third down and goal. And you saw Davis get frustrated there. I was watching the Cincy game flying down here from a season ago that did not start out well for UCF. Coaches say that he's one of the most competitive guys, both on and off the field. Super fiery. He felt like that ball should have been thrown. He wanted another touchdown. 53 catches, seven touchdowns last year couple scores tonight and that one just over the outstretched arms they're just trying to go a little bit of a Tebow jump pass please reset the Play game clock for two Killings. seconds two seconds please it is ball just down. thrown outside the outstretched hands of the tight end there fourth and goal two seconds left they're looking at the clock, the game clock down to two. Interesting call here. I like it. Punch it in. And in. Killens. And if that's a teaching moment. <laughs> There's a lot to learn. <laughs> well, obviously the move in the normal games take the points there. That's an unnecessary risk, but this was to make a point to his team. This offensive line, three all-conference players returning. Time expired in the second quarter. After the extra point attempt, it will be halftime barring a penalty. They've rushed for almost 250 yards. Yeah, if you can't get a yard or two down on the goal line before halftime, you shouldn't be playing football. Extra point, and that's the half. Lopsided, indeed. Number 17, UCF, a 48 nothing halftime lead. We'll send you back to our CBS Sports Network studio in New York for the Verizon Halftime Report. Adam Zucker, Brian Jones, Houston Nutt. You're watching college football on CBS Sports Network, presented by Geico. Mighty quick. In the house of PPR. To get out of hand, but it has 48 nothing. Number 17 UCF on top 
of Florida A&M. Rich Waltz along with Aaron Taylor. Uh, impressive stuff, obviously, for number 17. We knew this was a mismatch, but, man, this escalated quickly. They say you're never as good as you seem. Things are never as bad as they seem. Somewhere in the middle falls reality. UCF has been lights out. Been a little disappointed with Florida A&M offensively, but you cannot deny just how explosive UCF's been tonight. We were looking for quarterback play from UCF, and, boy, did we get it. Brandon Wimbush missed a touchdown early, but he came back and hit Davis for a 37-yarder and found Davis again on the money for a 12-yard touchdown. But then we saw the true freshman lefty, Dylan Gabriel, come in. He's going to go ahead and hit Anderson in the end zone, who they use at the running back and wide receiver position, and then finally ends up hitting Nixon for the six-yard touchdown. Let's take a look at our stats brought to you by Haynes Comfort Flex Fit not very comfortable for the Rattlers. I mean, look at the penalties and look at the total yards. You add that up and it's a 48 nothing halftime lead in the first downs. 30 to one. That is unbelievable. 10 offensive drives by Willie Simmons's crew. Nine of them, three and out. Question now becomes, Rich, who's going to be under center and what type of offense are we going to see out of the Knights in the second half? Marlon Williams out to the 30. Let's check in with John Schriff. And John? Well, I spoke to both coaches at the half. Let's first start with UCF's Josh Heifel. As you can expect, very, expect, very excited and happy with the way his team played in that first half. Well on, they played well on defense, they played well on offense. He said, of anything, we need to clean up our screen pass game, but really that was about it. As for Florida a and spoke to head coach Willie Simmons. He told me, look, guys, this might be the best team in the entire state of Florida we are facing. Show me something. Ryan Stanley will get the start in the second half at quarterback, but we will see other quarterbacks for FAMU. All right, thank you, John. Starting at quarterback in the second half for UCF is Dylan Gabriel, the true freshman. Miliani High School in Hawaii, he looked sharp. Brandon Wimbush, very productive in the first half as well. And it's a great time to get a freshman some time there. This is Amari Johnson with the catch. Now you're getting into the two deeps along the receiving core for UCF. Johnson with a catch and a nice run. This is basically turning into a glorified scrimmage in the second half for UCF. Some good quality reps for Dylan Gabriel, who, remember, gets to play four games without losing a year of eligibility. So even though UCF's up 48-0, this is still important in the development of a quarterback that will likely end up being a star here before he leaves Orlando. And that's Killens who gets inside the 40 down to the 36-yard line. The UCF staff, though, when talking about Dylan Gabriel yesterday, said he does not look like a freshman or someone that's just out of high school ball. And Tavius Thompson, the sophomore. This is how UCF runs their offense. They are up tempo. They will snap it before you have a chance to get ready and catch your breath. One hop on the snap back there and touchdown. Gabriel wide open catch and a touchdown. Alex Harris. Boy, this kid can really throw it. Zero rush. The snap was kind of dribbled back to him. He picks it up off the ground. There's no rush. One hops. Play shortstop like you did, partner. <laughs> It puts the ball on the money. It's hard to believe right now that Florida a and playing very hard. You just can't get yourself that open. Zero rush on the quarterback. Just made it a little bit too easy there for UCF. And Dylan Gabriel, when it comes to throwing the football forward, he's pretty good. Dylan Barnes for the extra point. He's had a good night as well. His first night kicking for UCF. Number 17 looking good tonight. Fine as his open receivers. Get some good quality reps. And check out this reaction. He's little twinkle toes flying. Knights flying offensively as well. Higher expectations. The light beer you've been waiting for has arrived. College football on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by Today's Military.
Your child's success tomorrow begins with your support today. Visit todaysmilitary.com to learn more. Buy Chick-fil-A's new mac and cheese. It's both cheesy and crispy on top. Need we say more? And buy Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Well, for UCF, the path to a New Year's bowl game has been pretty clear the last two years. 55 nothing here, and they're open to the question. Aaron Taylor is what's the path to a playoff bid, one of four? Well, they got to control their own destiny. They've been undefeated the last two seasons in a row. Won their bowl game a couple years ago, lost to LSU. A season ago, you need statement wins against quality power five opponents. They boat race Pitt a year ago. They get a chance to play Stanford in a couple weeks here, play Pitt again. Then they need some help. And I think the point of that whole graphic is even if they do everything perfectly, there's still not a clear path to the playoff, even going undefeated, that teams like UCF can control. Balls out of bounds. They can get some help, Aaron, from their own conference because the American has some great opportunities for quality wins. USF is hosting Wisconsin this week. Ole Miss is at Memphis. Houston is at Oklahoma. Next week, Cincinnati, who's beating UCLA by 10 right now in the fourth. Cincinnati has got Ohio State. There's the two quarterbacks next to each other. USF is at Georgia Tech next weekend. Temple's got Maryland. Oklahoma State's playing at Tulsa. So... There's opportunities for other teams in the American to have big wins that could help the strength of schedule in other ways. And that's the biggest knock against the group of five teams is the strength of schedule. Even when you have a team like Clemson who went 15-0, and 0, it's a very top-heavy conference. Aside from them, there's been six different postal champions in the last six years. So... The quality of your opponents and the quality of your opponent's opponents will certainly help UCF's case, but at the end of the day, they've got to do exactly what they've done the last two years, which is go undefeated in the regular season and handle business when it matters. I know you've always wanted to be an offensive coordinator, so I'm going to make you <laughs> one right now, and you just uh, took over here in the third quarter. How do you get this offense to get anything positive going? You run the football and start there. You establish the run. This Just is like they do, they run a counter with the quarterback up inside. Get something positive going to give yourself some makeable third down situations. We said this stat a second ago. There's been 10 drives for this team in the first half. Nine of them were three and outs. Their first down production has been abysmal. So the run game gives you a chance to make what's now here a third and seven is third medium. That's about as good as it's looked all night. I also think at some point, and I'm saying this in the middle of the first quarter, you almost want to think about making a quarterback change here to get some meaningful reps for your backup should anything happen to Ryan Stanley during the regular season in the MIAC. Nice little crossing pattern there, caught by Ray, and he's got the first down, and that's the first third down conversion, one of 11, and that's progress. Let's check in with John Schriffen. Johnny? Guys, that first down is huge for Florida and because yes, this is a lopsided game, but Willie Simmons told me at half, what's frustrating is that he doesn't have much film on tape to evaluate these guys. He needs to be able to get more film so going forward, they can improve this offense, but they haven't given him much right now. No, not at all. We'll keep it on the ground. Henrylis straight ahead to the 48-yard line. If you're UCF defensively, Rich, you're up 55 points. You're playing everybody tonight. Remember, these are largely the twos as we're looking at the second string quarterback there, Rashawn McKay for FAMU. Defensively for UCF, this is getting meaningful reps for your backups. Good opportunities for them to get on tape to be able to see themselves performing whether or not they got their alignments and their assignments and execute their jobs as required. another run and giving themselves another makeable third down this offensive line is still the starting unit that started this game a lot of injuries Brian Crawford went down so Zach Saffold number 74 which normally the left guard had to slide over his backup Tyrell Reed number 71 he had to slide up into the starting position a lot of guys playing out of position and they haven't had the one thing that's key to the offensive line and that's chemistry throughout camp Stanley gets it outside as Ende Ray is the playmaker for this team. And what do you know? 
All of a sudden, the Rattlers are moving the sticks. Stanley looking pretty good and operating this offense here in the second half. You have to wonder if the coaches talk to him. In a situation like this, Rich, there really is nothing to lose. You can take a deep breath, relax, and just do your job. And into UCF territory. I don't know what the heck to do in this part of the field. Well, come on, you're the offensive coordinator, at least for the third quarter. They're running these short, high percentage routes underneath. The run game has created some play action RPO opportunities. For them. Nice look there. Henrilis to the left side gets a surge and pushes forward for a yard and a half. Nice job by UCF setting the edge and funneling things back inside. But Henrilis does what a good back should do put his foot in the ground, get north and south, break a couple tackles, and turn nothing into a positive two yards. Byron Brown with that hit and stop for the Knights. A lot of starters back there in the secondary that started this game. Richie Grant, 27. Starting corner, Moore, he's out there. Well, this is almost exclusively on the ground. Cam Good stopped Henry Liss. And it's a loss of a yard. It's third down and nine. Thank God fam used running the football. That first half took almost over two hours because they were every pass they threw was incomplete but this is the thing that i felt early on they should run the football possibly make a change at the quarterback position rich when you can establish the run it forces the defense to play honest and it creates some options and one of the strengths of what this offense can be which is the run pass option game which is two plays called back to back if the run's there you hand it if not pull it up and throw it or drop it and fall on it which is essentially what happens with that ball the exchange tonight has been extremely problematic for this offense. Zach Saffold, usually a guard, having to snap the ball on third down. You end up taking a lost yardage play, and then the best drive they've had tonight ends in another unforced error. All right, we saw Fadul blast a, a lot of punts, and all of those he was deep in his own territory. Now he has a chance to aim for inside the 10. Marlon Williams is deep. This is all about getting high arc and trajectory to allow your cover men to get down there and down the ball as close to the goal line as possible. Well, that's not bad. Checks out of bounds. That's inside the 20. It's right around the 10 yard line. Baby steps right now for the Rattlers. Everyone sort of. College football on CBS Sports Network is presented by Geico. Number 17, UCF 55 nothing. Geico difference makers get in line because there's a lot of them tonight. First, Dylan Gabriel, true freshman quarterback, eight throws, seven of them complete, three touchdowns, and then Adrian Killens. And a lot of those yards coming on a big one. 14 carries and 106 yards. And in case you haven't seen Adrian Killens, you're missing a great show. Yeah, he's got blazing speed. Been all conference the last couple of years. Makes his way out on the perimeter, but also has the ability to get up inside and the tackles hit that B gap and bounce. Make his presence felt on the goal line as well as we see Thompson. Thompson get loose as well. This running back group, if you're a night fan you've got to feel outstanding about your offensive line and the running game that starts everything if that's there you can weather any sort of storm you expect to have with a quarterback transition that one is incomplete Dylan Gabriel still in there Amari Johnson was the intended receiver it's funny you talk about running back depth and we were we we're going to talk about the top three running backs that that UCF had and we had Greg McCray and Adrian Killens and then you had Otis Anderson third, and I said, well, what about Ventavius Thompson? So I think next time we do this, we ought to put just four guys up there. <laughs> There's Thompson with the catch, and he's out to the 35 right at the first down. It's just an embarrassment of riches, all these guys. Thompson, a season ago, averaged five yards a carry. Killens, five yards a carry. Greg McCray, almost nine yards a carry. The speed and explosion is stupid. Boy, that's a bullet there from Gabriel. Caught by Kayvon Ahmad, the freshman, uh, Colleyville, Texas. 15 yards on the catch. 
Squint your eyes a little bit. You see Mackenzie Milton back there. Gabriel, and he overthrew his intended receiver, Marlon Williams. Oftentimes, that's a hard throw for the quarterback. Their eyes get all big. We've seen him throw two errant passes. That one and won a couple snaps before that were bad balls, likely mechanics and those sort of situations. But Coach Heupel's got to feel very good about what he's seen out of that quarterback room tonight. Got some really good options and talent to help this team navigate. Not many people could recover from the loss of Mackenzie Milton, but I think UCF moving forward is going to be okay. And of course, Mackenzie Milton is saying, I'll be back next year. That surprised me a little bit, I'll be honest. He made the announcement after he got the feeling back in his legs with the nerves. I mean, this was a kid who many thought he was going to lose his leg. It was touch and go early on. But everybody that knows him said that they weren't surprised at all. Ooh, that's a, a, not a bad throw right through the hands of Amari Johnson. And UCF with a rare punt. This uh, this program, this community. Here's a look at the throw. Catch. You got to make this catch with your Johnson. Go up and get it. The team, the, the program, the school, the community in and around. Just a, a tremendous amount of support for Mackenzie Milton through what had to be a nightmare of a uh, rehab process, okay. which is still ongoing. Right. That ball slides into. The end zone is going to come out to the 28-yard line. Andrew Osteen says, I'm tired of watching the other guy with great punts. I've got a good leg of my own. 55 to nothing. Number 17, UCF. You can get it all. Grubhub. Restaurants you love. Delivered. Time now for the Chick-fil-A fan cam. That man, not just a fan, but a longtime CBS and UCF employee, Ron Thau. Enjoyed my conversation with that young man earlier today. Fans still into it. These students here hanging in for the long haul. We see Ron snapping his head. He wants to see this action. This new quarterback, Rashawn McKay, who's under center. So McKay, who's been signaling in plays all night, get some live action Deshaun Smith on the carry and Deshaun Smith upended time of possession was lopsided in the first half and and the number of snaps were not but the Rattlers threw the ball and completed very few of them they didn't run the ball much at all which meant the clock was stopped almost the entire time the Florida A&M had possession I'd like to see them give McKay an opportunity to use his legs and make some plays. So the time of possession is not that lopsided. Great play. You wanted someone to make a play? Is that Richie Grant, the junior, first team American Athletic Conference selection? You can see him come from the right of your screen here. He reads this right away, defeats the block of Xavier Smith, and that's why he led this team in tackles a year ago. He's got a nose for the football. Those six interceptions are pretty easy to understand with instincts like that. Third down in a bunch. Low snap again. McKay. Left, oh. left guard gets crushed. And so does Rashawn McKay. Trayvon Morris Brash. Strike a pose. Oh, penalty. UCF feeling it a little bit. Showing off and pays the price. Good job getting pressure, but you see coach is not happy. There was a picture that they pretended like they were taking a lot like we've seen in the NFL. Got an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty as they get an earful from a very unhappy coach. This is the backup defensive line unit. Yeah. yeah. I, Look, it, uh, you can do that in the NFL, but... Unsportsmanlike conduct, defense. Players number 83, 97, and 94. 15-yard penalty, automatic first That's down. That's great. 
That you know what? players first, unsportsmanlike conduct foul. That's, that's great officiating to get all the numbers. He didn't get all, uh, they no, did like he did. six he left guys. a couple out, he left a couple out. But when you get three guys in a penalty like that and you <laughs> name them, that's pretty darn good. Oh, man. And, and here's the deal, man. Like, these guys are feeling it. It's 55 to nothing. But in the, that's unsportsmanlike conduct in the truest sense of that word, given this situation. Eddie Tillman's in the backfield. That is a first down. And McKay over the oh. middle and a nice strike there right at the 40. Andrew Davis, the junior out of Mount Dora, Florida, with a tumbling catch. Beautiful catch inside underneath soft coverage, finding the zone over the backer in front of the safety textbook. 17 yards, another first down. Now you see UCF pressing a little bit more. They played off that last one, paid dearly for it, and they go back to what allowed them to be so successful in the first half. McKay going to go up top again, and this one is incomplete. Xavier Smith on the sideline. Didn't take them long to make that adjustment, Rich. Play off and give receivers space. They're going to pick your part. That's really the bread and butter of what this UCF offense is, one way or the other. Primarily with the RPO game, again, run pass options, where when you're gashing people for over 3,800 rushing yards a year ago, you're going to get your backers and safeties to respond. And once they do, they read that overhang defender. And if that guy that's kind of hanging out in the flat commits to stop the run it opens everything up underneath for those quick slants that play did not develop quickly but it's a positive one it looked like eddie tillman may have stepped out of bounds further up the field from where he landed yeah this is going to go back to the 49 yard line right there nice job getting to the edge and several missed tackles by some of the backups on this defense. They're down at one. Coach the play. Let the runner short of the line to gain. It is third down. Again, these are the backups for UCF, but it's this run game, which really kind of jump-started this offense in the second half. And a quarterback that's been able to throw the football with some accuracy down the field. Third down and one, and flags are down. It, it's going to be procedure. Snap infraction, offense number 74. Five-yard penalty, remains third down. It's usually a double movement. Yeah. Essentially snapped it to himself. And again, playing out of position. Zach Saffold, redshirt junior at Lynn Haven, Florida. Was watching them in pregame warm-ups and just didn't really seem natural at that center position. McKay wings it out, caught, but Smith can't stay in bounds. And he ends up out of bounds at the 46. And it's gonna bring up a fourth down and about four. Nice job by Aaron Robinson running out to that flat. There was instant pressure. A couple of the offensive linemen got beat right out of the gate, so good job by McKay to get that football out. But this is four down territory for the rest of the night. As long as the football gods want to be good to Florida A&M, they've got to muster something together offensively. Snap the ball. <laughs> A little early in the backfield. Was there Offside, movement? Offside unabated to the quarterback. Defense number five. Five Rushes yard penalty you. results. First down. first down. Yeah. Not surprised to see him be leaving the game. That's Charlton. Starting defensive end, boundary defensive end, true sophomore out of Southridge High School in Miami. And this is what coaches hate, man. It's getting late in the game. Result seems to be in hand, and guys starting to play sloppy. But what it does do is allows him to coach him quite a bit harder next week, which is necessary. Movement. And this one's going against Florida A&M. Prior to the snap, false start. Offense number 51. Five-yard penalty, first down. We haven't trotted out our famous alum list yet for the Rattlers. 
a list of which is pretty darn impressive. The Tallahassee School, you will go all the way back to Althea Gibson. How about Bullet Bob Hayes? Bullet Bob. How about the Hawk, Andre Dawson? Oh, Baseball Hall of Fame, Nate Newton. How about Meadowlark Lemon? Oh, man. Oh, oh. It's deflected and then picked. I'm not sure if it hit the turf or not. Brandon Moore's got the ball. Nobody stopped playing. I didn't hear a whistle, but it almost looked like the ball hit the ground and Throwing then popped the field up. is an incomplete pass. Second down. Now they're calling it incomplete. One hop. Yeah, hits it with his right knee, kicks it up. But play to the whistle. Good tip ball drill. And I agree with you. I didn't hear it. I didn't hear any whistles as well. And unfortunately, we've got a player down for UCF. I'll right. take a timeout. 55 nothing. Knights. Concern on the sidelines. Brandon Moore starting corner for UCF is down. Aaron, what did you see? Well, you saw parts of the body going directions and positions they shouldn't go. It's it's candidly it's hard for me to watch that sort of stuff given the things that have happened to me orthopedically. But the question I have is what is Brandon Moore doing in a ball game that's this in control? John Triffin is down below. John? Well, they're bringing the cart out now for Brandon Moore, but Aaron, with that sentiment, I was walking down the UCF sideline and I heard multiple players scream, what was he doing in the game? And that's what everybody wants to know right now. And now they're trying to uh, tend to him as he's lying on the ground right now. This is a significant injury. We started this game in the open talking about the strength of this UCF defense, one that Randy Shannon, their coordinator, had high hopes for this season, that the strength was there back in. We highlighted Richie Grant, the redshirt junior at a Walton Beach, Florida, the leading tackler returning from a season ago at six interceptions. But Brandon Moore and he have been on the field largely in the second half. We saw Aaron Robinson not too long ago, a starting nickelback making plays we've seen them rotate significantly the defensive linemen as they look for guys to step up and make plays when you have a 55 to nothing lead with a minute 21 towards the end of the third quarter you got all conference players out there and one's about to get carted off on the field with his future unknown you can see the emotions right now that's Gabe Davis starting wide receiver this is a, this is really a Florida team this UCF team these so many players out of this football rich state especially South Florida and that Miami area Word spreads pretty quick about what the nature of the injury is. And there's a ton of concern as we see Willie Simmons, the head coach for Florida A&M, watching closely and carefully towards the right of your screen. This game is a violent game. It's a physical game. It's the way it was intended to play. It's the way it needs to be played. But this is some of the unfortunate realities that you experience as a player. And I've certainly been no stranger to those green John Deere carts, my darn self. If you're just joining us, a minute 21 is left in the third quarter. Number 17, UCF had a brilliant first half. Florida A&M has yet to really get up off the canvas in this one. And here late in the third quarter, Brandon Moore starting corner for the Knights. Got his leg and foot caught underneath. Yeah. They've been through this, and now I'm, I'm not talking about the severity of the injury, but just the, this feeling, this empty feeling, you know, watching what Mackenzie Milton went through against USF. And so the memory is still very, very fresh in everybody's mind. The, the team, the fans, the support staff. Yeah. 
Got some rain falling now on a hot, humid night here in Orlando. Mm. It's unfortunate. The guy was just trying to make a play. Ball had touched the ground. Ended up being an incomplete pass versus an interception. And so you've got the entire team coming across the field in support of Brandon Moore. You can see the Rattlers have taken a knee. It's a tough moment here in Orlando, and we'll step aside. The medical staff is still loading Brandon Moore from a gurney onto a cart. You can see they've removed that left shoe, and they're securing him before they transport him for medical attention. Now, while we were away, remember the entire UCF team came across the field. The FAMU team was there as well. If you watch the bottom left side, there was an altercation. Thankfully, even though it looks like it's about to erupt into a full, full on brawl, it never got that far. The coaches were very quick. The officials were in there. And there's more. His teammates emotional. They went through this with Mackenzie Milton last November. And here they're the very first game back here on this field. The more seems to be up and in good spirits. It's still a, a, obviously a very tough sight for the program and those around UCF. And let's hope for the best for that young man, the, the junior out of Sanford, Florida. I'm not sure why emotions bubbled over and there was animus there between the two teams in, in a moment which seemed like there was pretty much unity by everybody in uniform on both sides but let's hope that that doesn't continue throughout the night with, or what's left of the night it's unfortunate rich bam Hughes had 11 penalties for almost 100 yards tonight several of them as we pointed out early in the ball game were not only foolish but also dangerous hard to really see what happened there but to your point Let's try to end this one on a high note. Right, Florida a and has the football at their own 46. Rashawn McKay has taken over at quarterback for Ryan Stanley, and McKay has been on the mark so far on this drive. David Manigo with the catch. Nice job by Manigo fighting through tight press coverage, getting the inside position. Credit Rashawn McKay for putting that ball on the money a little bit low and away so that the defender couldn't get to it. This is four down territory. With the way he's been throwing the ball, look for quick slants, but you see tight press coverage, single high safety across the board, almost 10 of the 11 players within five yards of the line of scrimmage. They're down at four. McKay, an inside screen, caught, and a first down. Xavier Smith ducks in. Look, the... There's no drama in this ball game. The only thing that you're, if you're Florida A&M and Willie Simmons is get on the scoreboard. Have something positive come out of this second half that you can carry with you into your next week and your next games. Well, they've got 15 seconds before the end of this quarter. Looks like they're gonna try and snap it with one more play, but yeah. The goal here is to get something positive to have all of this hard work pay off. Inside handoff, Smith coming around end. And he's escorted out of bounds. And that is the end of the third quarter.
That is the end of the third quarter. 55-0, number 17, UCF. In full control tonight. Again, the home of Navy football on CBS Sports Network. 55 nothing, number 17, UCF in control. Saturday starting at noon Eastern, CBS Sports Network brings you three games. We start from Lucas Oil Stadium, home of the Colts, Indiana, and Ball State. Followed by Navy and Holy Cross, and then at 7.30, Missouri at altitude, taking on Wyoming, the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. Kelly Bryant and Missouri. How will altitude affect that uh, game if you're Missouri and Bryant? I know it affects me when I walk up to the press box. I can only imagine what it does to the dudes on the field, man. All right, to finish your story, we, we saw the injury to, to Brandon Moore and, and how affected Gabriel Davis was. Those two are very tight. In fact, they're both from the same place, Sanford, Florida. High school teammates and Davis visibly upset and still shows that emotion on the sideline. Play action for McKay. Takes an end zone shot and overthrows everybody. Trying to get the end zone and running the corner out the cornerback. Play pretty good coverage there. Trying to take some deep shots for the end zone. Been impressed with Rashawn McKay tonight. Five for eight for 33 yards. The offense hasn't moved much, but with McKay in the center, it's at least been going forward. Second down and 10. Nice completion there. And that's Caleb Parker, the freshman out of Jacksonville. Who's down to the 22-yard line for the Rattlers. Nice job of the absorbing block by Xavier Smith that time. Parker smartly put his foot in the ground and got vertical. Seeing F FAMU, Florida A&M running some of their backups in the skill positions, getting these guys some meaningful reps and an opportunity like this and the craziest atmosphere that they've had. These sort of third medium situations are really good to develop character and build upon as the season goes on. Press coverage across the board, quick pass. Swing it out, Smith. Balls lost out. the ball, may have got it back, and I think he did at the 20 after a one yard gain. I gotta tell you, Rich, the football gods have been extremely generous with the bounces of the balls that have been punched out. That's a great forced fumble that time on the back end. But luckily, the receiver got it. That was Sean Burgess Becker, the linebacker, to punch that ball out. Now, we're going to get a chance to see Yahia Ali, second in the MEAC and scoring with 76 points a year ago. Cannot overstate how important this field goal try is. He has a big leg. This is from 37. Oh. And the Rattlers are still not on the board. Chris DeLoach gets in, gets a hand on it, and it's still a shutout in Orlando. If you're looking for the best place to pick up a pizza, might we recommend the place with pizza in the name? Call Pizza Hut now to pick up a large three-topping pizza for just $7.99. No one out pizzas the hut. Loser buys lunch. <laughs> okay, Jack. USAA Bank has you covered. Don't sweat it, Sergeant. With no monthly service fees, you've been saving a little extra. That means more for corn dogs and maybe some practice. Find help at every turn with USAA Bank. Attention. IHOP has new crispy buttermilk chicken made with all-natural chicken breast, chicken sandwiches, chicken and waffles, cock-a-doodle yum. And for a limited time, IHOP chicken and pancakes, only $6.99. Tired of lugging around big bags of pet food and litter? Get it delivered. Chewy.com delivers everything your pets need right to your door. They ship all your favorite brands of dog food, cat food, litter, 
toys, and treats. All at amazing prices. Plus, you get fast, free shipping. <laughs> With Chewy.com, you don't have to break a sweat or the bank. Save 30% on your first order and get fast, free shipping. Shop online at Chewy.com. Keeping the night interesting is all about setting the right tone. Lower carbs, lower calories, higher expectations. The light beer you've been waiting for has arrived. Corona Premier. Hitting the gym bod, admiring Jim's bod, sweet bachelor pad bod, rocking that dad bod, not too loose, not too tight, paint pouch, fix your shredder, you clean your coffee and your skin, you love the body red, hey bod, happy hates. Pound for Pound is brought to you by Rogue Fitness. Pound for Pound, this guy can really run the football. Greg McCray. And the rest of that running back core running behind a really good offensive line, maybe the best offensive line in the American. Those guys have been doing a nice job. Otis Anderson, Adrian Killens, Greg McRae. How about Jake Brown, Samuel Jackson, Cole Schneider, Jordan Johnson, Parker Boudreau up front. I love it. When I don't have to promote the offensive line, it makes my job easy, Rich. I'm, I'm here, glad I'm, I'm here the only for one. You. Thank I'm you. Here for you. I had to create an award to get people to notice the offensive line. Because you took it easy with me in the medicine ball <laughs> yesterday <laughs> with a little rogue fitness. Then that one knocked out of bounds. The Joe Moore Award, most outstanding offensive line unit. Here are some of the uh, greater offensive lines. Yeah, those are some of the usual cast of characters. Alabama was the inaugural runner in 215, 2015. But I got to tell you, man. I gained an appreciation with this UCF offensive line going all the way back to the George O'Leary era when Brent Key was the offensive line coach with the McRae brothers. Those dudes used to mash people's face in. And I got to tell you, Glenn Ellerby, who came with hype here from Missouri, Missouri always has one of the, the quiet, good offensive lines in the SEC. They play a physical style of football, even though Drew Locke was throwing it all around. All right, we've, it all starts up front. We've talked about, what, four quarterbacks. Milton, we talked about Mack. We talked, obviously, about Winbush and Gabriel. But here's Quadri Jones out of Orlando. Jones High School here in Orlando. And the redshirt freshman gets some time. This is great, man. This kid walked on here. He's a local kid. Grew up watching loving UCF he's got a big live arm which we're not going to get a chance to see but again these are the sort of opportunities where you want to get the backups and guys that may not get an opportunity to get in the game to get some live meaningful reps it's a different deal man when for us when the red light comes on or when you're not at practice and there's no coaches out on the field telling you what to do it changes things Good punt. Oh. Zende Ray lets it roll into the end zone. 11.22 left here in Orlando. Hey, the band's all here, still. Coming up next, join CBS Sports Network in the studio. Our team of experts will break down all the matchups going on around the nation. It's inside college football on a 24-hour home of CBS Sports. Aaron Taylor now will revisit his keys to the game, which he put down pen to paper many hours ago. <laughs> well, land punches early. Uh, they took possession of the ball after winning the toss, but after that, it was all downhill. They didn't limit explosives. UCF played clean and physical completely on that side of the ball. And then defensively, the negative plays, no takeaways, but winning third down, they were exceptional. Brian Stanley hit as he threw, and that's incomplete. Or excuse me, R Rashawn McKay. Stanley, the starter, and he went for two plus quarters. McKay moved the team. There's a look at Stanley. He had uh, a rough night. He had guys in his face, and at times when he had time, he was unable to hook up 
with his receivers. This was a uh, Florida a and team that we thought was going to move the football and put some points on the board. Well, 2015, Willie Simmons' Prairie View A&M team led the FCS in scoring with almost 50 points per game. The dude knows how to install offense and score points. Now this UCF defense will get a, a maybe a a further deeper look at how good they are next week when they visit Lane Kiffin and FAU. That's a challenging offense to slow down for sure. And that stadium in Boca should really be bouncing around itself next weekend. You'll be there, right? Carter Blackburn and I will be on the call for that. And remember, FAU is two years removed from an 11-win season. The fight in Lane Kiffin's know how to score some points as well. It's a nice step up in competition for this UCF team. McKay is blasted. When you look at the start of the season, going from Florida A&M to Florida Atlantic, and back-to-back -back Power 5 opponents, Stanford and Pittsburgh. That's going to determine a lot about this UCF team, and that's plenty of time to kind of figure out your quarterback situation, get Brandon Wimbush settled, and figure out what your rotation is going to be with the young freshman, Dylan Gabriel, who could play all the way through that Pittsburgh game and still redshirt. Now, they have punted so many times that Chris Fadul is not back to punt. Maybe he's icing his leg. I'm not sure, but and we have to uh, apologize here. We do not illegal have substitution. Twelve men on the defense. Five yard penalty. Remains fourth down. The roster that I was handed does not have a 55 on it for Florida A&M. So this is kind of like spring training baseball. <laughs> Who do we suppose it is? Do we have any idea? Well, I know it's not Chris Fadul. <laughs> After watching that roll across the 50, Fadul was averaging most of the night over 50 yards a tenth. We will find out who that man is when we get back. There's Fadul. It's 55 zap. Happy. McDonald's with Uber Eats. New user, get $5 off. College football on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by Rogue. Don't Weaken. By Verizon. America's most reliable network. And by Chick-fil-A. Try their grilled nuggets for a bite-sized backyard taste of the grill on the go. Orlando nicknamed the City Beautiful. And right in the middle of it is this huge, thriving, growing university, UCF. You were talking about the night schedule. They are going to Boca to take on FAU and a really good offense. Stanford in the top 25 comes here. Pitt is better than last year. They travel to Pitt before entering into the American, and the American seems to be better this year than it was last year. Agreed. Cincinnati, UCLA went final, beat them by 10, 24-14. The Bearcats picking up this year where they left off a season ago. That bodes extremely well for a UCF team that needs all the help from the strength of schedule standpoint that they can get. Quadri Jones throwing a nice completion there. The Trillion Coles. And that's a first down. Well, we said it in the first half. One of the things that could help UCF in trying to get to a playoff and really continue to grow and get a better ranking and more attention is for teams in the American to win games like that. And it, look, it, it, to be honest with you, it, it could benefit not just UCF, but it, I mean, what if Cincinnati goes in and upsets Ohio State next week? That would be phenomenal. What if USF beats Wisconsin and they get rolling? For any team in the American, you want the league to take down as many big names as you can along the way and they get they get those games in the first three to four weeks of the season it's enough to get the street cred that you would need and then ride that out given that you could stay undefeated towards the end of the year i like that i, I think you should start the aaron taylor street cred poll <laughs> i mean we have the ap poll 
We have the college football playoff poll. Coaches poll. Coaches poll somewhere. My, mine, mine would literally be as credible as a coach's the poll. The street cred poll. Oh. oh, man, wide open. And Jones hits him in stride. Amari Johnson. Touchdown. UCF 49 yards. Johnson needs to be careful there of over celebrating and getting another unsportsmanlike conduct penalty. But that's a true freshman. He's out of Miami. His first catch for this team ended up being a pretty dang big one. It's not often in a college football game where three different quarterbacks throw touchdown passes. Yeah, and that's actually Amari Johnson's second catch. But again, it's not running the score up. It is, but it's justifiable in the sense that you want to get your backup third string quarterback some meaningful reps. Just the defensive back is just going to slip a little bit. And then Johnson just uses his speed. He has to stop and come back to the ball that was underthrown. Thank goodness the DB slipped on that case. But he was open by six or seven yards. And that's just a testament to the amazing speed that they have on the perimeter in the backfield here in Orlando. Welcome to the nightmare. It's impressive that they still have enough people to put that banner up because... This place had 45,000, and they were bouncing around when it started. But not many of them have remained. The band is still here. There's a few left in the student section. But that part about UCF being a thriving campus, this is a great place to be a college student. And next year when they open up that lazy river that they're talking about, which, which will enhance the, the party atmosphere, somewhat like when i was in college i didn't need any lazy rivers or any help to drink and party it was like we found a way we had the first party balls keystone light this now wait a minute this is after you turned 21 thank you yeah we just want uh everyone in, in notre dame compliance to know that that's the statute of limitations i've already checked into it on multiple <laughs> accounts rich i'm pretty safe <laughs> Zende Ray is upended and multiple flags arrive at times. Might be a During the return, illegal block in the back, oh. receiving team number 28. Ten yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. In the American, there's some really good teams in the American, in case you didn't know. UCF has lost one game over two years. Cincinnati is really good. They won 11 games last year. USF is really good. Temple's got talent, and that's just the East. What's key here in this is that Cincinnati beat UCLA earlier in the day. In the preseason pool, and with a convincing victory that blew the point spread to smithereens, they'll at least be 17 going into next week, and they're at the highest preseason ranked position giving them the shortest distance between there and that coveted number four spot for the college football playoff poll at the end of the season. All right, here's the West. Memphis. Houston's got their quarterback back. Tulane, SMU, Navy, and then Tulsa. Yeah, well, it's all about Memphis. Got them winning the West. 14 returning starters, including Brady White, who threw for over 3,300 yards, 26 touchdowns a season ago. They lose, do lose Daryl Henderson. But Patrick Taylor returns, and not a lot of people know his name, but he very quietly had 1,100 yards a year ago. So there is some potent, potent offense in the American Conference and some high-quality teams that have, on a regular basis, proven that they can play with the big boys a lot like the Mountain West did before TCU and Utah and Boise State got their names in the paper for, for doing what they did. Remember that when that was a big deal when you got your name in the paper? I do. Kalia, oh. Kalia Davis made that stop for UCF. And the pride of uh, Lee High School in Jacksonville. Cameron Sapp is now the quarterback for FAMU. How many times in the morning after your game did you run to the newspaper stand and look for the Contra Costa Times back in the day to see you. if they took a picture of you. Look at you with some local knowledge in the East Bay 
Uh, starring at uh, De La Salle High School. Was it was Alhambra? Where, you Alhambra go? Alhambra High School. Man. We did not. We've uh, we've produced an NFL player, a major league player, but mostly coaches. The Van Gundy brothers, oh. the Turner brothers, Ron and Norv as well. So good coaches. Mediocre broadcaster. Punt is away, and Marlon Williams makes the catch. Williams trying to bounce it outside. And he finally ends up on his backside at the 47-yard line. Last two AAC championship games came down to two teams. Memphis and UCF. Those were great games. And Mackenzie Milton doing Mackenzie Milton type things. And then of course last year, Daryl Mack in relief. What a great job he did coming in. They did not skip a beat. He showed up big late when they needed him in both postseason games, as did Greg McCray, who was huge. 24 carries over 200 yards in the conference championship game against Memphis and that was a that was a do not panic game for 100%. UCF because they fell behind in that game Both games they were down by two touchdowns in the conference championship game and the bowl Full game I believe Bentavious Thompson with the carry and he's out to the 27 six minutes left in this one Yes, the, the up-tempo offense is slowed to a huddle and let the play clock mercifully run. They weren't doing that until about no. this series, man. They were snapping it with 36, 35, oh, because look, 31 it, seconds left on the play clock. For your number twos and number threes on your depth chart, you want them to play or at least get reps at the tempo that you run. So when they do, if you do need them, in a tight spot they're used to pace and they're used to that tempo but now i think and rightfully so it's about run clock get out of here after a night where we've seen three quarterbacks and they've all looked good for ucf oh my gosh look at that stat line i'll tell you what this kid in the middle had a heck of a night is the the last series he had some errant balls but quadri jones a perfect two for two and a touchdown how about that 50% touchdown completion percentage for Quadri Jones. It's pretty good. Well, Jones, the redshirt freshman. Brandon Wimbush, the starter. I think I mentioned earlier that he was not here for spring ball. He did get here in time for spring ball. And Wimbush, as we were told, had to win the locker room first and did that. He is well liked in the locker room. He's well liked in the quarterback room. Everyone seems to be very supportive of each other. Got the freshman Dylan Gabriel. Mackenzie Milton is in that room. He certainly is. He did a great job, and it's fourth down and a couple yards here, a little bit more than a yard. And UCF may run a play here, try and get this first down and continue to bleed the clock. Oh. Yeah, you don't want that. Almost jumping offside. It's Florida A&M. Clock is down. Jones will keep. Lost his footing, but gets the first down. And so that's the best of both worlds. It keeps the clock running. I want to go back to what you were saying about Brandon Wimbush, though. The reason that he won this starting job is because he's experienced, he was confident, his leadership was off the charts, immediately came in and won over the locker room. And by doing that, it made it easy for the coaches. But the way that he did it was not with his words, but with his actions. Being the first dude in, the last dude out. All the great ones are that way, Rich. They set the standard. What that does is it allows your teammates to see that it matters to you, that you're there, that you're putting in the work. What we saw in the two quarters of football from Brandon Wimbush was he has a, a very good grasp of this offense there weren't procedural things there weren't missed errant passes and miscommunication there were some inaccuracies Snap infraction offense number 64 five-year penalty second down in, in our coaches meetings yesterday one of the most interesting things I heard was from Josh Heupel 
when we talked about how do you make the transition from Mackenzie Milton to Correction. Wimbush Still first down. with Mac first down. playing in three games in, in between and make it seamless and make that offense run. He said, you know what? We will have subtle changes to our offense depending on who the quarterback is, whether it was Milton or Mac or Wimbush or Gabriel or even Quadri Jones. For him to admit that and say, look, we change, we tweak our offense depending on the strength of the quarterback that's in there. All good coaches adapt. I mean, look at Alabama and Nick Saban. Remember when the hurry up, no huddle spread was dangerous for football? And how can these offensive coordinators run this offense? And then the very next year he did it. So you work to the strengths of the, the people, the personnel that you have. Obviously the quarterback is a really important position. But what I saw differently in the offense tonight from UCF was a lot less RPO game. A lot of the, the quick slants where you're reading the overhang defender, either the outside linebacker or safety, those were largely gone. It was run, it was short game. In the screen game, we heard Heupel through John's report say that they needed to get better at both the throwing and the blocking part of that. But we saw a lot of deep shots to take advantage of the, the big arm that Brandon Wimbush has. But that short, precise intermediate passing game is largely missing. To the sideline. And out of bounds is Trillian Cole. But you know the reality of college football. You know that the FAU staff is probably watching this game right now. They're going to dissect this game film. So how much of what you saw offensively tonight does UCF tweak or change or add to next week when they're in Boca Raton? It, it was largely vanilla basic offense that you could watch highlight tapes and see what they do their base offense kind of is what it is they're going to run some h counter they're going to get to the perimeter they're going to run some end of rounds they're going to do some things motion pre-snap some receivers and then take some deep shots and use the speed on the outside edges fau's got two years of tape watching them and you'll have that game next week with UCF at FAU. Do yourself a favor and go to the Friday night bonfire rally in Boca Raton. Pretty good deal, huh? Pretty good deal. Does it end by chance by 7.30? You mean in the morning or at I, night? I, I turn into a pumpkin by 7, 8.30. Uh, yeah, well, I think you could hang for that. Oh, man. I'm... It's Boca. I'm a... Boring old married dude with kids, man. Sleep's about as exciting as it gets in my world. <laughs> Brandon Wimbush and UCF with a successful start. We'll try to get an update, if you can, on Brandon Moore and his leg injury. That's the, the somber note here for UCF on this night, is that their starting corner suffered a what seemed to be a serious leg injury in the third quarter. And Josh Heupel and UCF, number 17 in the country. Their debut tonight against Florida A&M. And a decisive 62 to nothing win for the Knights over the Rattlers. You can see the two head coaches there, Willie Simmons and Josh Heupel. Two college quarterbacks in their own right. Brandon Wimbush, first game at UCF. Gotta say it's a success. The kid looked great. Dylan Gabriel, he can really spin it. And he sure did tonight. And we saw Quadri Jones as well look good, throw for a touchdown pass. And of course, it gets tougher at FAU. Lane Kiffin's offense will be waiting for him. Then Stanford is here. And then on the road against an improved Pittsburgh team before they start play in the American. And for FAMU, they'll lick their wounds and get back to work and try to get back for their second winning season in a row. They haven't done that in about eight years in Tallahassee. So that would be something to shoot for, certainly for the Rattlers. I thought the quarterbacks, by and large, did a beautiful job tonight. You see the aloha there. That young buck's got a bright future. But this team can win with Brandon Wimbush. I think the future's pretty bright there. All right, let's go down to John Schriffen, and he's with head coach Josh Heupel. 
Coach, congratulations. An impressive opener for the season. How would you evaluate the performance? I, I thought we did a lot of really positive things in all three areas of the game. Uh, obviously, there's going to be a lot of things that you look back on film that we need to improve on as we uh, continue down this journey. Uh, the low night for the, the low point for the night, obviously Brandon Moore, a lot of people at home wondering how he's doing. Do you yeah. have any update on him? Yeah, we're going to find out when we get him to the, uh, to the hospital right here. And, and um, man, there's not a better kid inside of our program. Guys battled through, battled through a lot of adversity in his life. All of our thoughts and prayers are with him. Obviously a fine line in a blowout when you get your starters out. Was there a reason why some of the yeah, starters still in there? Yeah, just count that we were looking at. And, and um, obviously um, disappointed that that happened. You know, so. Thank you, Coach. Appreciate oh, your time. Appreciate All right. Let's keep our fingers crossed uh, for that young man, Brandon Moore, the corner. Well, tonight, number 17, UCF, impressive. And a blowout win for John Triffin, Aaron Taylor, I'm Rich Waltz, everybody here on our CBS Sports crew. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports Network. Good night from Orlando, 62-0.